with Jim Yarbrough. We'll be bringing you all the action. And speaking of rivalries, you've experienced it as a player, but what about off the field? Well, Jim, uh, my life is not at stake today as to who wins this ball game, and your life is not at stake. But I'll tell you what is at stake, and that's the quality of our life. I don't think I can leave this ball game again and have grown people bark at me in the parking lot. I brought my uh, uh, headache medication just in case I need it. And most of the times for the Gators uh, in the recent past coming here to Jacksonville, uh, it's been a sad experience. And the Gator, uh, the Bulldogs have been celebrating. But the game is going to be won or lost today, I think, as always in the Florida-Georgia game at the line of scrimmage. And let me talk about some folks up front. For the Bulldogs on defense, big Henry Harris, number 52. John Brantley, number 42. Will Jones is the rover. And John Little, who was the rover at the safety position now, are tre tremendous for Georgia on defense. And the guys that have to control those folks up front for Florida, that offensive line, big Jeff Zimmerman, the All-American prospect for the Gators. And David Williams, the outstanding tackle, number 73. Frank McCarthy, the center. We saw how important last week controlling that line of scrimmage was, and especially in the second half, and the Gators got that momentum. On uh, offense, uh, Wilbur Scrozier the offensive tackle is an all-american candidate for georgia victor perry kim stevens mac Burles at offensive guard and todd wheeler the center last year if you'll remember georgia controlled that line of scrimmage on offense had over 270 yards rushing the football in 1984 when the gators won 27 to zip who controlled the ball game that great wall of florida so that uh now the gator defense okay we got jeff roth at the nose guard, we got Keith Williams, Rodney Weston, Henry Brown alternating in and out of the game. Those guys are going to be responsible for who wins or loses this ball game. Now, last year, Florida came in here ranked number one in the nation off a big upset victory over Auburn and Heisman Trophy winner Bo Jackson. This year, a big upset victory, 18 to 17 last week. A thrilling game in Florida field. Same situation. Is there a danger of Florida going a little flat today? Yes, uh, you know, statistics say that when the Gators beat Auburn, they have less of a chance of winning this football game the next week against Georgia. But I find that hard to believe. I know you and I had a little bit more of a bounce in our step and a smile on our face after beating the War Eagles, and we just watched the game. The Gator players that were out there and made that victory possible, they've got to be excited about coming in here off that tremendous victory, that tremendous fourth quarter, and facing the Georgia Bulldogs today. So I think the Gators have a 50-50 chance in this ball game. Well, they have a lot of intense rivalries, and this is one of their big ones. Georgia and will be back with the Florida-Georgia game right after these messages. Florida football is brought to you by Armstrong Carpets, Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Florida, The Florida Orange Growers. Also by Dairy Farmers Incorporated, Florida's milk producers. By First Union Bank of Florida. Your Florida and South Georgia Ford dealers. Gatorade Thirst Quencher. Likes Meats. By Merrill Lynch. Scotty's and by Sonny's Real Pit Barbecue. Thinking about the chicken plate from Sonny's Real Pit Barbecue makes my mouth water. I'm talking about plump, tender chicken with Sonny's Great Barbecue goodness cooked right through and served up with Sonny's special coleslaw, fries, and garlic bread. Oh, now that's good eating at Sonny's near you. Everybody loves to eat at Sonny's, because Sonny's makes it all right. Sonny's Real Pit Get ready. 
Nothing cuts through thirst like Gatorade Thirst Quencher. It quenches the thirst in your throat while it helps put back the potassium, fluids, and minerals your body sweats away. Gatorade is thirsty. <sighs> For that deep down body thirst. A good leader has to have two essential qualities. One, you've got to be persistent. Always keep trying no matter what. And two, you've got to be able to instill that winning attitude in others. That's how the Ford dealers have stayed number one in truck sales here for 18 years. They keep working to give you the best deals on tough Ford trucks, and they pass on that positive attitude to everyone in their dealerships. I tell you, it's great working with the leaders at your Florida and South Georgia Ford dealers. Subscribe now to Gator Bait, the sports weekly for Gator fans. Call Collect 904-372-1215. Don't wait. Get Gator Bait. We're looking at the Hart Bridge in Jacksonville, and anybody who is familiar with the Florida-Georgia game is familiar with that bridge because this means a sea of orange and blue and red and black as the Georgia Bulldogs and Florida Gators meet in the Gator Bowl Stadium here in Jacksonville. Well, it's 82 degrees as the captains meet. The Bulldogs hold a 40-21 and two lead in the series. In only four of 32 games uh, that have been played, in this series, you can see now as we look at the field and they are talking to Scott Armstrong, who is the defensive captain for the University of Florida. The wind speed 10 to 15 miles per hour. Wind direction is from the east. The chance of rain is 20%. Florida won the toss and they declined to receive. They will kick off as we look at Vince Dooley. His career record 181, 69, and 10. He is third behind Bo Schembechler and Joe Paterno in victories for active coaches. Galen Hall with an excellent record, 21, 5, and 1 in two full seasons and parts of this one at the helm of the Florida Gators. Now, the top college teams in the country from 1980 to 85, Nebraska, Brigham Young, and third, Georgia, followed by Penn State and Miami. sixties and all through the decade of the seventies but he just seems to get better and that Georgia program keeps rolling and rocking along in the top ten consistently every year and uh, they're always challenging always challenging for that southeastern conference championship well he and Johnny Vaught are tied for second place behind Bear Bryant in southeastern conference championships won so he has had an excellent career at the University of Georgia as their head coach was at LSU so the Bulldogs this is a critical conference game for them in addition to being the big natural rivalry it's a critical conference game for the Georgia Bulldogs because they enter uh, Jacksonville today with only one loss in the conference well it is a beautiful beautiful day and there are just over 80,000 fans on hand for this game today in Jacksonville's Gator Bowl Stadium John David Francis, number five, will be kicking off for the University of Florida. 59160, a sophomore from Stark, as he puts the ball on the tee as they prepare to go against the Bulldogs of the University of Georgia. And Francis moves to the football and boots it high. It'll be taken by Fred Lane at the 7, the 10, the 15, the 20, the 25. He's up across the 30-yard line before he's brought down by the University of Florida special teams. Freddie Lane is a real speedster, Jim Gallagher. He's probably one of the fastest guys on the Georgia Bulldog team. He was a wide receiver. Recently, because of the injury situation, they had to move him to tailback. James Jackson, the quarterback for the University of Georgia, eight touchdowns. That he has accounted for so far this year. The dogs are six and two as they come in here to face the Gators. The Gators are four and four. And a split backfield behind Jackson as they line up against Florida. The give off is going to go to Tate. Tate to the fire side, and he's brought down by Florida's D. Steve Stipe, the outside linebacker, a senior from Wake Cross, Georgia, makes the hit for the University of Florida. Offensively, Tate, McCluskey, Thomas Osborne, and Sadowski, the skill people. And the and big guys up, up front the... that we mentioned, uh, Jim, Wilbur Strozier and Victor Perry, the senior offensive tackles, will lead that offensive line for the Georgia Bulldogs today. 
All right, moving to the line right now is James Jackson, the quarterback, with a split backfield behind him on the second down and eight from the 34-yard line. The give-off goes to David McCluskey, the fullback, and he is stuffed as he hits the line outside linebacker Clifford Charlton. The junior from Tallahassee, Florida, makes the tackle at the 35. So a short gain. It'll be third down and seven with the ball on the 35. There you see the defensive starters for the University of Florida, the Crunch Bunch back there, Mulberry White, Oliver, and Williams, the deep guys. And that defense giving a tremendous effort all year long for the Florida Gators. Well, they were magnificent against the Auburn Tigers last week. Tight end goes to the far side. That is Sadowski for Georgia. And dropping back to throw is Jackson out in the flat, and it is complete to the midfield stripe. For a first down to John Thomas, number nine, brought down by Adrian White, the strong safety, a senior from here in the Jacksonville area, Orange Park. Well, the Georgia Bulldogs, a lot like the Auburn Tigers, have improved with their ability to throw the ball when they have to, even though John Thomas only has 12 receptions all season long. Mainly it's because they don't throw to him that often. They're so successfully running the football, but there they had to do it, and they got it done. First and 10 at the 48-yard line for the Bulldogs of Georgia. Receivers left and right as Jackson rolls to the left side, hangs onto the football, and turns up field into Florida territory, taken out of bounds on the far side at the 45-yard line of Florida, and it is Jarvis Williams that takes him out. The number two rusher for the Georgia Bulldogs is the quarterback. Averages four yards every time that he rushes with the football and you know most of the time when a lot of times when it's called a rush He's scrambling Steve Stipe got caught in a real bind right there He he didn't know whether to come up on Jackson or drop off in pass coverage He dropped back the quarterback took advantage of the corner Moved the football down the field second and three at the 35 yard line for the dogs and the give off is gonna go to Tate He goes right up the middle it looks like he's got the first down to the 41 yard line Scott Armstrong inside linebacker senior from Ocala Forest High School making the tackle for the Gators. Lars Tate actually uh, may be the third string tailback for the Bulldogs. Hard to believe, but the guys that killed the Gators last year, Keith Henderson and Tim Worley are out with injuries. Lars Tate, the burden is on his shoulders this afternoon. The big strong tailback. As they come to the line, it's first and 10 at the 41 yard line of Florida for the Bulldogs of Georgia. They put a motion man now to the bottom of your screen as Jackson, the quarterback, rolls to the near side looking to throw, and he's going to go up overhead and go long, and it'll be incomplete. It was intended for Cassius Osborne, 24, and the coverage man was Dwayne Glover. By the way, Jim and I will be picking our mid-state federal player of the game, and that will be coming up in the fourth quarter of play. So the ball goes back to the line of scrimmage. It remains at the 31-yard line. 12 minutes and 44 seconds to play in the first quarter and no score in the football game at Jacksonville's Gator Bowl. Now the center wheeler is up over the football. Jackson quarterback Sadowski 87 the tight end and the pitch is going to go to Tate and Tate turns up field but he gets a couple of tough yards to about the 38 before he is brought down. Scott Armstrong, uh, inside linebacker that had such a big game last uh, last week against Auburn, made the hit on the inside. That tailback is so dangerous when he has the powerful offensive line, gets some momentum up front, gives him the ability to continue down the field or make the cutback. He can go outside or make the cutback. Right there, there wasn't the cutback potential because there was a lot of Gators ready to make contact near the line of scrimmage. They're down in seven at the 38-yard line now as Jackson looks at the Florida defense. Florida throwing up the four-man front, and the give-off is going to go to Tate. Tate to the outside and gets to the 32-yard line. He's going to be short of the first down. Brought down by Scott Armstrong and Adrian White for the Gators. Well, the tailback's the bread and butter. Off tackle or pitch the ball to him and let him do his work. Lars Tate, big and strong at uh, 209 pounds. He's a 6'2 junior. He's averaging over 5.5 yards per carry. They've got a decision to make. It's fourth down and a yard, and the ball is on the 32-yard line. So do they go for the field goal? Do they go for it or what? We'll know when we come back. But first, these messages. Some of you watching this commercial are ready to buy a new car right now. Every dealer in Central Florida wants your business. Some have gimmicks. Some sell hard. Some sell soft. Some are number one, and some try harder. But after 56 years in business, Lloyd Buick Cadillac BMW knows what sells cars. Price and service. Added value without added dollars. 
Drive to downtown Daytona Beach, and you're going to drive a better deal every day, every week, every year. Another 30 seconds of common sense. Introducing the 1987 Hyundai Excel tooting its own horn. See, the Hyundai Excel has become the best-selling first-year import ever. In fact, it now outsells the Toyota Tercel, Toyota Corolla, and even the Honda Civic. And to those of you who made this tooting possible, your Hyundai dealer says thank you. Say thank you. As for the rest of you, better toot on down to your Hyundai dealer. Test drive an Excel at one of these Orlando Hyundai dealers. We sell cars that make sense on the 31 yard line and the oh. give off goes to Tate and Tate is stacked up let's see if he got it Keith Williams the first guy to greet him big senior from Milton Florida well he might have got Thank it but it wasn't obvious there was some uh, a lot of collisions at that line of scrimmage right there very close but I think he did edge across uh, a half yard that he needed 11 minutes 29 seconds to play in the first quarter and no score in the game let's talk about that Georgia running game They're they're averaging 120 yards per game more than the Florida Gators are running the football. Georgia just an awesome running game, but uh, what's new? They have that kind of running game every uh, every season. Todd, Todd Wheeler, the center, and Kim Stevens, the right guard. Mark Burroughs, the left guard, doing an excellent job up front. We talked about that big, strong offensive line. That's the same offensive line that moved the Gators off the line of scrimmage last year, with the exception of the center. Todd Wheeler's the only new starter from last season up front on offense for the Bulldogs. They get the first down. The ball remains at the 31-yard line, and the pitch is going to go to Tate. And Tate cuts off tackle and is inside to the 22-yard line before he is hit by Lewis Oliver, the free safety number 18, a sophomore from Belle Glade. Before today's game, members of the University of Georgia chapter of Phi Kappa Psi fraternity presented today's game ball to University of Florida coach Galen Hall. The game ball was delivered by these fraternity men by bicycle from Athens leaving Thursday in order to focus attention on arthritis and the Arthritis Foundation. Richard Costigan and Mike Crane from Phi Kappa Psi made the presentation representing the Florida Arthritis Foundation Senior Vice President Earl Treadway. Second down and short yardage a yard to go on the 21 yard line again Tate gets the call and he gets the first down to the 15 yard line inside the 15. Lars Tate 62 209 a junior from Indianapolis Indiana. Lewis Alder and Rondi Weston two guys from Belgrade Florida combined to make the tackle. Lars Tate with 32 yards already here in the first drive. Now the Gators did win the toss but they waived the decision to the second half they wanted Georgia to have the football Georgia's got it and is taking advantage of the situation right now. And now Fred Lane, number four, is in at the tailback position in place of Tate. And Jackson rolls. He's thinking. Right He's got Sadowski still on his feet and fighting to the two-yard line. Troy Sadowski, a sophomore from Chambly, Georgia, makes the catch and gets to the two. Scott Armstrong and Lewis Oliver combine. That's going to give them a first down, and they're knocking on Florida's door. A lot of pressure on those linebackers. They have to come up and stop the run, stop the run, stop the run. Then what happens? They give a little play action, sneak the tight end just behind them, and Sadowski makes the catch. The tight end, so valuable in possession football. You've got to be able to drop that ball to your tight end or your fullback on occasion. And Georgia doing it with great success on the last play. The Georgia's got two big backs in now. They've got Kevin Jackson and David McCuskey in. And there was a face mask call against Florida, and that is going to move the football to the one. So it'll be first down and goal on the one-yard line for Georgia. They go with a power eye, and then they put a man in motion, and the pitch is going to go to Tate, and he goes into the end zone, and Georgia has scored to jump out on Florida by a score of six to nothing. Well, no, no doubt about who controlled the football, who controlled the line of scrimmage on that drive. Lars Tate simply walks into the end zone. Just a brilliant drive on Georgia's first possession by the Bulldogs. Well, there was a good run back on the kick. He had four touchdowns against Richmond last week and has just been having some great games. He gained 626 yards last year, averaging six yards per carry. So what a great back. And now it is Steve Crumley who will attempt the extra point. The hold will come from Chris Carpenter. There's the snap, and the ball is in the air, splits the uprights, 
And that's got it. And so Georgia leads seven to nothing and we'll be right back in the Gator Bowl. Feel close now, take a lesson. Lax goes fast, it's like a blessing. Getting lights won't treat you wrong, cause when it's lax, it's gone. Fact is, lax is country good. Use freshly meat just like you would. Nothing in lax don't belong, so when it's lax, it's gone. The lax boys don't take shortcuts making family favorite bacon, ham, and sausage. To give them that real good taste, they take their good old time. One more time, when it's lax, it's gone. Fred Femer's misplaced his Scotty Sure Saver catalog. Femer's frantic. He knows it's full of sure savings for the home and yard. Femer's frenzy. He knows it's filled with Scotty's guaranteed lowest prices. Femer's fuddled. He doesn't know why Fifi tossed it in the trash. With Scotty's, you're sure to save money and time. We have the most convenient locations in Gator Country, and we're open seven days a week. Check your mail or newspaper for your Scotty Sure Saver catalog. Save it. You'll never have to chase a bargain again. Kerry Watkins across the 10, the 15, and up across the 20 to the 24-yard line before he's brought down by the University of Georgia, but part of that good field position, number 84, Mike Guthrie makes the tackle. 13 plays, 68 yards, possession time, 5.07, Lyons State with a one-yard run, and then the kick was good by Crumley, and so Georgia leads by a score of seven to nothing. One try does not a ball game make, but it sure got some respect out there, didn't they? First time Florida's had the football now since they put it on the kicking tee, as the handoff is gonna go to a fullback, and that is Wayne Williams, and Wayne Williams goes across the 25 to the 26-yard line. 23-yard return for Kerry Watkins. Wayne Williams, Anthony Williams, Ricky Natiel, Eric Hodges, and Mark McGriff. Williams, Sims, McCarthy, Wright, and Zimmerman up front for the Gators. Octavia Gould out with uh, an ankle injury. Probably will play some this afternoon, but Wayne Williams, who has the most speed of any Gator tailback, starts this afternoon. Kerwin Bell, 43 career touchdown passes. Fourth in the all-time SEC list. High formation now, and the give-off is going to go to Wayne Williams, and he gets his own yardage there to the 27-yard line as Aaron Chubb combines with Henry Harris to make the tackle for Georgia. That Henry Harris is a load. He's 265, but he looks like he weighs 295. They have him listed at 265. There you see the Bulldog defense. Uh, Led by linebacker John Brantley, we pointed out, who's from Wildwood, Florida, near Gainesville. And we might point out what the dogs do is they try and get eight men up to crowd that line of scrimmage and dare you to throw the football. They don't think you can run on them. Third and six on the 27 as Kerwin Bell looks to throw. He's under some pressure, rolls and throws, and it is incomplete. Balls is incomplete. It was intended for Daryl Woolard, who was deep on the play, or and so... It goes as incomplete, and that means Florida's going to have to kick. Let's take a look at it. Yeah, I think the ball gets tipped right here. Kerwin's looking down the field for, might be, no, it was Stacy Simmons, Stacey number Simmons, 28. 28. The ball just slipped right through his hands. Uh, not much success for the Gators on their first attempt with the football. On fourth down, McAndrew will kick, and Fred Lane is back. And he takes the football at the 34. He's across the 40 into the 44-yard line for a nice return, a nifty return. And that really puts and Georgia in excellent lane. field position now with 8.17 to Nicoletto. play in the first quarter. And the Bulldogs are leading by a score of 7 to nothing. Joey Nicoletto making the tackle on the punt. Georgia with some decent field position uh, outside their own 40-yard line. Let's see if they can put back-to-back -back, uh, drives together. They were very, very impressive their first time they had the football this afternoon. James Jackson goes with the eye. He's got receivers left and right, and he puts Kirk Warner to the tight end to the left side. And the give-off goes to the fullback, number 30, Henderson, and he gets uh, some yards to about the 47-yard line before Keith Williams brings him down. Now, Keith Henderson is the kid that had so much success against the Gators last year. He's been nursing an injury. They were uncertain as to whether he would play this afternoon, but he's on the field right now. Second and seven at the 47-yard line. Motion man coming to the bottom of the screen. And there's a flag on the play as the quarterback Jackson is drilled behind the line by Todd Gatlin, sophomore and inside linebacker out of Fort Walton, Choctaw. 
and Jim Gallagher. There's a flag on the field. We'll have to see what the call is. The Gators are doing some con having a conversation with the officials right now. Gatlin doing an excellent job at the inside linebacker position. He and Pat Moore come in and alternate with Arthur White, who's been nursing an injury, and Scott Armstrong, the senior from Ocala Forest, who starts for the Gators at one inside linebacker position. It's warm this afternoon, so you'll see both teams, I think, uh, substituting very liberally. Illegal procedure against Georgia. It was declined by Clark. Watch Gatlin shoot the gap from his inside linebacker position. This is going to be a quick screen out in the flat. But Jackson doesn't have a chance and is trapped easily in the backfield. So it's third down with the ball on the 40-yard line. James Jackson looking at Florida's three down linemen, two outside linebackers, and Jackson drops the throw, throws, and it is complete to the tight end. He's still on his feet and across the 40-yard line before he's taken out, and that would be Kirk Warner, the freshman from Cochran, Georgia, brought down by Gatlin and Kerry Watkins. Third and long, obvious passing situation. Jackson having su some success passing the football this season. Again, finds that tight end. Adrian White misses the tackle right here. And Warner's going to pick up an additional 10 yards. Well, it's first and 10 at the 39-yard line. And here is Georgia in Florida territory once again here in the first quarter of play. They go with the eye, and Tate gets the call off the left side. He's inside the 35 to the 33-yard line. And Adrian White, Keith Williams make the tackle for Florida. Georgia continues to have success on offense. They, they eat the clock up. They've already got points on the board. 6.56, there it is, to uh, play in the first quarter, and Georgia leading by a score of 7 to nothing. and they have controlled the football for most of this first period. Passing and running the football, doing both. Sadowski, 87, moves to the right side, the tight end, and the pitch is going to go to Lane, and Lane comes to the near side, and he is hit after he picks up maybe a yard by Jason Lambert, the freshman from here in Jacksonville. Went to Terry Parker High School, so he's playing in front of family and friends today. Freddie Lane was the most uh, dangerous wide receiver that the Bulldogs had at the beginning of the season, but now he's playing tailback. They were fighting that injury situation with uh, Worley and Henderson. They had to take a wide out, make him a running back. Tate and Henderson both in the ball game now in backfield positions as Jackson on third down and two at the 31 yard line. Hangs on to it himself and he might have the first down. We'll see when they unpile where they spot it down, whether or not he got the first down. Oliver and Gat Gatlin combining for Florida. Again, we need to mention that James Jackson is the number two rusher for the Georgia Bulldogs. The Gators jumped all over the fullback right there when Jackson faked the handoff, and then he simply moved outside and picked up the uh, first down. At the 27-yard line. 45 to play in the first period. The eye and McCluskey is the up back in the eye. Motion man to the top of the screen would be Osborne. And it is Tate. Tate inside the 10 yard line to the nine. Lars Tate. From the Speed City shows some foot speed from Indianapolis, Indiana, and he gets right down there. It's a trap action. Kim Stevens, the guard, makes a great trap, and Scott Armstrong has his tackle attempt broken right there. Lewis Oliver misses the tackle. Lars Tate moves the football inside the 10. So it's first down, and the goal for the Bulldogs inside Florida's 10, and they are threatening again here in the first period of play. Jackson gives off to Tate. Tate on the counter, hit at the line. Maybe got a yard to the eight. Keith Williams and Henry Brown combining for Florida and he on the hit. Excuse me, Jim. Anytime you get inside the 10-yard line, it's more difficult for an offense because that defense contracts closer to the football. It's harder to run with some success. But with Jackson's ability to roll out, to keep the football, to dump it to a tight end or give it to one of the talented tailbacks, Georgia is a tremendous threat to score. Second and goal at the eight-yard line. Motion man to the top of the screen. And the pitch is going to go to Tate. And Tate is brought down again as he hits the line. Georgia using two tight ends. Steve Stipe making the tackle. He is a senior. I think we pointed out earlier, he is a Georgian from Waycross. 
four, 17 left to play first period, and Georgia up 7-0 on Florida, threatening again. So much pressure on those linebackers. They've got to stay up and respect that run. They, they have to stop that run, but then what does Georgia do, or what might they do? Sneak the tight end out, sneak the fullback, dump the ball off to him. Osborne, 24 in the slot to the left, is split backfield behind Jackson. Jackson rolling left side, looking end zone, throws for the end zone, and it is too high. Good coverage on the play by the University of Florida's Jarvis Williams with Clifford Charlton was putting the pressure on. John Thomas, the flanker, was trying to get to the corner, but Jarvis Williams had none of it. Excellent coverage by Jarvis. He's the unofficial captain of that crunch bunch in the secondary. That's a big moral victory for the Gators right there. Georgia was stuffing it down their throat, but they're going to have to settle for three if they can get that. Uh, a moral victory for that Gator defense. The kick will come from the 14, so it's a 24-yard attempt by Crumley. He moves to it and boots it, and it is good. And so Georgia has pulled out to a 10 to nothing lead with 3.45 to play in the first period. We'll be right back. has just gotten a field goal. Steve Crumley, who just kicked it, kicks off. And it's going to go deep. Kerry Watkins at the six-yard line. He's across the 10. Cuts up field at the 15. He's still on his feet at the 20. He's across the 25-yard line to the 26 before he is taken down. Nice so a nice Watkins return by Kerry. Kerry. Nice job, Kerry Watkins. You don't want to get stuck inside your 20 when you're against a powerful opponent like the Georgia Bulldogs. And now the Gators are outside their 25, on about the 26. I think Florida's had the uh, football for three plays in this first quarter. That was a 20-yard return. 11 plays, 49 yards, possession time, 432. Crumley's 24-yard field goal does the job. First and 10 at the 26-yard line as Kerwin Bell drops the throw on first down, looks out wide, and it is complete to the 40-yard line to Eric Hodges. Hodges takes the football down, the senior walk-on from Philadelphia at 6 one Looks like he's hurt. The, the kids on the team call him Philly because he's from Philadelphia. Nice protection up front. Kerwin able to deliver the ball on the sideline route. Greg Williams making the hit. Looks like the kid they call Philly, Eric Hodges, is injured. You Gator fans who are planning to travel to Tallahassee for the FSU game in three weeks plan to be there a night early to see the Gator basketball team open its season against Florida State Seminoles. That game is Friday evening at 7.30 in the Leon County Civic Center. And on November 17th, the Gators play their annual exhibition game against athletes in action at 7.30 in the O'Connell Center. You can call the Gator ticket office toll-free at 1-800-342-342. 7851 for more information as Eric Hodges comes across the field. After making a 14-yard reception right there, uh, Gators can't afford to lose Eric Hodges. Ricky Mulberry is also nursing a shoulder injury. Might not see that much action this afternoon. A real challenge for that offense right now to, to keep the football, move down the field, and possibly get some points. George has proven they can do that. Bell at the quarterback spot on first and 10 now at the 39-yard line. I formation behind Kerwin. Tony Lomack, the motion man, 37. The giveoff is going to go to Wayne Williams, and Wayne Williams gets to the 42-yard line. Steve Boswell, the weak side linebacker, and Aaron Chubb, the right defensive end, bring him down. Now Anthony Williams checks out of the 
football game for the Florida Gators and checking in is Dwayne Ferguson. Second down, seven at the 42, a slot offense. The slot would be to the left side, and Darrell Woolard, 21, a freshman from Gainesville, is the slot back. The pitch is going to go to Wayne Williams. He cuts up field to the 42-yard line before he's brought down. 5'11", 190, a sophomore from Titusville, Florida. There go my Brown. Larry Brown fighting off the block. Uh, Wayne Williams had some ability to cut back right there, but uh, he was a little anxious. And Larry Brown made the hit, but there was the potential for the cutback right there. So Florida's got third down six at the 43-yard line as Vince Dooley looks on. And Gators go slot to the right side. Kerwin Bell to throw, and he does, and it is complete to the midfield strike to Ricky Natillo who played with a separated shoulder in the second half last week and made a great catch for the Gators. Watch Dwayne Ferguson pick up the blitz right here. You don't see it on about the top of your screen. That's why Kerwin has no one near him, has plenty of time to deliver the football. The offensive line did their job, and young Dwayne Ferguson, the fullback, stepped right up there and picked up the blitz. Nice to see Natiel out there catching a the football. He has definitely got a problem with his shoulder. First and 10 now at the 49-yard line of Georgia for the Florida Gators with the eye formation as Kerwin Bell looks to throw and does, and it is complete to the 41-yard line to Mark McGriff, the sophomore tight end from Gainesville. Went to Gainesville High School, very close to the university. We might mention the teal has just passed Chris Collinsworth and gone into third place in career yardage receiving for the University of Florida. Well, what works for the Goose will work for the Gander. We saw the Georgia Bulldogs use the tight end successfully. Here come the Gators hitting Mark McGriff. you got to have that tight end available to you in your passing game, especially when you're playing a powerful opponent, a powerful defense like the Georgia Bulldogs. You have to have a number of options to go to. Second and two as Anthony Williams goes straight up the middle and goes to the 25-yard line. The junior out of Tampa Plant High School making a fine carry for the Gators and surprising the Bulldogs. Well, up front, watch the guards. Charlie Wright, Bob Sims, Frank McCarthy. When you give the ball to the fullback, you know you're whipping some people right at the point of attack. He's in the secondary quickly. Finally, Gary Moss, the cornerback, comes over and makes the hit on the big fullback. And anytime those little cornerbacks hit a big fullback, they're going to feel it. First and 10 at the 25-yard line. High formation with a slot to the right side. And Kerwin Bell is looking outside. Incomplete. Tony Lomack, number 37, drops the football at the 15-yard line. Well, that's your freshman mistake complete. right there, trying to run with a football. Of course, also he's looking back at a very bright sun. It's very difficult to catch the football when you're running on, on the TV screen from right to left. It's very difficult to look back in that sunshine, and that's what he had to do right there, plus the freshman nervousness. He just couldn't come up with a handle, but was he ever wide open? Second down and 10 at the 25 for Florida. 47 seconds to play first period. They trail 10 to nothing, and Bell is three out of five for 31 yards this afternoon. The Gators making a move here. Darrell Willard, as he continues on, and is taken out of bounds along the far sideline inside the 20 at the 18-yard line. Well, Terry Webster, Willard. the weak side linebacker, takes him out. What a nice catch for Darrell. Well, here comes the blitz. The guys up front close it down, but watch on the outside. Anthony Williams picks up his man, but they're sending another. Vince Guthrie, the, the linebacker, also comes in. Woolard does a nice job here of avoiding John Little, the tremendous all-conference performer who was a former rover back. They moved him to safety. Woolard broke the tackle, moved up close to the first down mark. Third and three now at the 18-yard line. A seven-yard pickup for Woolard. Slot eye. The slot would be to the left side. And the give-off goes to Wayne Williams, and he is stacked up at the 15-yard line by John Brantley, the middle linebacker. Wayne Williams, the ball the junior carrier. from Wildwood, Florida, and uh, Brantley is Stop the leading Brantley and got three. bulldog tackler with nearly 15 per game. And no doubt about it, the Gators are going for it, sending another tight end out on the field. Well, they made it. They made it by inches. I thought it was close, but they're not even going to measure. They've got the first down, so Florida now knocking on George's door at the 15. Well, you're talking about a momentum change. Watch Wayne Williams following Anthony Williams. Look at Jeff Zimmerman. His man's five yards off the line of scrimmage. 
That's an All-American block right there by the big, strong tackle, number 74, the senior. Hodges has checked back in. He will go slot to the left side. They'll go with the pro set behind Kerwin Bell. Bell gives off to Anthony Williams on the counter. He's inside the 10-yard line to the 7. Anthony Williams about here. Anthony Williams, a nice carry again. All right, now you, you got to have some movement up front if your fullback's going to bend the football back. He starts over to the left, but he immediately hits the hole on the right because there was movement up front. That is the end of the first quarter with the score. Georgia 10 and Florida nothing, and we'll be right back with more. But first, these messages. Another 30 seconds of common sense. While you've been waiting for someone else to buy the first Hyundai Excel, over 120,000 of your friends and neighbors are enjoying their first Excels, making Hyundai the best-selling first-year import in history. And now the 87s are here, better than ever, and still starting at only $49.95. So, what are you waiting for? Hurry down to your Hyundai dealer. Bring a friend. Test drive an Excel at one of these Orlando Hyundai dealers. We sell cars that make sense. I'm sorry. Your veterans' programs are well-founded. However, we can't see that you have any support. I'm afraid we'll just have to forget about it. The rights and benefits earned by America's veterans may be forgotten unless we support the effort to preserve them. I, um, I think we ought to look at this again. When you're asked, join the American Legion. We remember the vets so no one forgets. Not long ago, Bill bought an AT&T PC. Bob bought another kind. When they needed better graphics and even more speed, Bob got a new one. Bill just added it on. When they needed multitasking, Bob got another new one. Bill just added it on. Because with the AT&T PC, Bill could add on new features as his needs changed. So when Bob couldn't keep up with his business, Bill just added it on. Computerland, your AT&T dealer in Central Florida in Ocala, Lakeland, Gainesville, and three locations in Orlando. grow up with the dream. The dream to be totally in command of a glorious flying machine becomes reality for only a select few. Bob Barnard takes you to a world-renowned pilot training school right here in Central Florida for a fascinating look at what earning their wings is really like. A Channel 6 News Extra, starting Tuesday at 6. First and goal for Florida's Gators. The seven yard line or second second at the seven yard line and uh, here is Kerwin Bell split backfield behind Bell and he gives off to Anthony Williams who's stuck maybe got a yard on the play Anthony, Anthony Williams, Williams the ball carrier. Georgia waiting for him Larry Brown the junior from Decatur uh, Georgia uh, uh, makes well, the hit if the Gators want to they're in four down territory right now let's set the chains it looks like after play here early in the second quarter it's third and a foot third and a yard the Gators can make the first down here they come at the six yard line slot to the left side and Kerwin Bell's give off is to Wayne Williams and he is brought down before he gets the first down sophomore from Titusville tripped up by Georgia Vince Guthrie a sophomore from Lithonia, Georgia, making the tackle. Now Galen Hall sending in the extra tight end again. No, he's not. They're going with a field goal. Well, you need 13 points anyway. Excuse me, you need uh, a field goal and a touchdown anyway, so why not go ahead and get the field goal right now? Jeff Dawson will attempt the field goal. It's going to come from the, looks like the 13-yard line, so it'll be a 23-yard attempt. Steve Ewing will hold, and Walter Bird the snapper, and uh, it is through is on the board so we've got a 10 to 3 ball game in Jacksonville and we'll be right back before you draw a conclusion about health care insurance remember this card and its instant recognition anywhere in America remember that no one works harder to provide local reliable service statewide remember the wide choice of health care programs quality programs at affordable costs finding answers to health care costs is what we've done for over 40 years longer than anyone else when you remember that there's only one conclusion to draw blue cross and blue shield of florida 
Raider fans, are you tired of searching through your sports section for scraps of information about your team? I'm David Sturt, publisher of Gator Bait, Florida's only sports weekly devoted to Gator coverage. It's all here, game recaps, player features, and extensive recruiting reports. 38 big issues for just $30. Subscribe now and I'll send you a free copy of the Florida Football Yearbook. Call me collect at 904-372-1215 to order your subscription. Don't wait, get Gator Bait. John David Francis, number five, will be kicking for the University of Florida. They have just put a field goal on the board. It's a 10-3 ball game, and he hits it deep. It is going to go to Fred Lane, number four. Fred Lane takes it on the two. He's at the five, the 10, the 15. He's across the 20 and taken out of bounds in front of the Georgia bench at about the 27-yard line. And it looked like uh, Barry DeWitt, number 14, took him out for Florida. Well, we got a barn burner, don't we? Uh, it's exciting. Both both sides of the stadium know they're in this football game. Georgia taking control early most of the first uh, quarter. And then the Gators fighting back late in the first quarter to get some respect. Moving, moving the football, actually, Jim, I think it was 67 yards in 13, 13 plays. plays. And that's an excellent drive for the Gators. Now here is James Jackson at the quarterback spot. They take the tight end. Sadowski goes to the top of your screen. Eye formation. And the give is going to go to the up back. Keith Henderson, and he's hit as he hits the line of scrimmage. Walter Bird, I think it was, number 79. And they're doing an excellent job. Walter, the long snapper, uh, not seeing a whole lot of action on defense. But with Ron Moten being injured, Walter Bird seeing some action. And my goodness, did he make an excellent play right there? He certainly did. It's second down nine on the 27-yard line for Georgia. A split backfield behind Jackson. And the giveoff goes to Henderson, and Henderson is brought down as Florida's defense gets tough. Arthur White first there along with Jason Lambert. You don't see Georgia in a split backfield uh, offense right. very often. They kind of tip their hand right there. I think uh, that's a passing offense. Generally, they line up in the eye. But uh, they tried the uh, draw, and the Gators were ready for it. Third down and 11. The ball on the 25-yard line now for Georgia as the Gator D has stiffened here in the second quarter. 12.30 to play in the second period, and Georgia leads 10-3. formation and Jackson rolling to the left side scrambles turns up field and he is gonna get the first down it looks like he's got the first down across the 35 yard line as Lewis Oliver took him out but what a nice recovery that was well just an incredible effort here by James Jackson it's a sprint out left the Gators have the protection uh, the defense does their job in the secondary but he's gonna running himself and watch the extra dive right here as he escapes Ricky Mulberry the dive enabled him to get the first down at the 37 yard line that was Fran Tarkenton revisited maybe a little bit quicker version I think but I think so too Tarkenton was one of those guys that you could never ever catch Jackson looks like he's out of the same mold a little bit more speed obviously so here are the Bulldogs coming out of the huddle. The Gator D going with the three down linemen. Motion man coming to the bottom of the screen. And Jackson's give is going to go to Tate and take no to Tate Henderson. Still on his feet. He's across the 30. The 20 finally taken down inside the 15 yard line at the 13. Keith Henderson, who had some great runs against Florida last year, comes up with another great one today. Adrian Hoyt, the strong safety from this area from Orange Park, makes the tackle for Florida, saving the touchdown. Mac Burroughs throws the trap. Wilbur Strozier, the right tackle with a big block. And then it's all Keith Henderson, a young man that supposedly wasn't going to play that much this afternoon. You see a broken tackle right there. But look at Adrian White hustling with his excellent speed. Going to run Henderson, who's nursing a bad leg down from behind. Big play by Adrian White. Georgia inside the Gators 15 yard line. First and 10 at the 13 yard line for Georgia. And the give off goes to David McCluskey, the fullback. He goes up the middle and gets inside the 10 to about the nine. That was a 50 yard gain for Henderson. Pat Moore and Clifford Carlton make that last tackle. At the center position right now for the Bulldogs is big Keith Johnson. Jim Gallagher, he's 6'5", 310 pounds. Ooh.
Bet his mom was glad to see him go off to college so she didn't have to feed him for a while. Second and six at the nine yard line. On the road. Jackson rolling, looking, and he'll be taken down by Lambert, who makes a great play. From Terry Parker High School, right here in Jacksonville, the freshman, six foot four, Jason, Jason Lambert, Carey, doing excellent Lambert. range, excellent speed. Jackson so dangerous on the sprint out. There's Lars Tate looking for somebody to hit. Keith Williams hustling over. Jason Lambert breaks off the blocking attempt of Lars Tate to make the hit. Takes him out at the 14-yard line. It'll be third and uh, 11 for the Bulldogs on the 14. 10 minutes, 28 seconds to play in the second period. That was a loss of five. High formation again for the Georgia Bulldogs. Tight end Sadowski, 87, to the right side. Jackson looking to throw, goes for the end zone, and it is incomplete. It was intended for John Thomas, number nine, and the coverage Jackson's pass and on the play was good. Play. Clifford Charlton was the guy that was really putting on the pressure in the backfield, and Jarvis Williams covering Thomas. And uh, we have a flag on the field. Going to be against the Georgia Bulldogs. And it off back to the 19-yard line. Georgia penalized five yards. So delayed. they were... Delay of game. Penalized five yards for taking too much time. Evidently, evidently that played it and count. The whistle must have blown before the snap. Here comes the third down attempt again. There's the big guy coming up over the football, Keith Johnson, 61. And he does get over it, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Jackson dropping back, looking. He's being chased by Florida, pressured out. He's looking for somebody, and they take him down at the line of scrimmage. Good defensive play by the Gators as Clifford Charlton gets in there and makes the tackle. The entire defense deserves credit right there. The guys in the secondary had everybody covered. Jackson has no one open. Look, he's looking. Where are they? Where are they? First he gets a rush. Jeff Roth makes him sprint out. Now, where's my receivers? They're not there. Finally, the linebackers and linemen converge to make the hit. Excellent play by the entire Gator defense. So this field goal attempt will come from the 26-yard line, a 36-yard attempt by Steve Crumley, and he boots it, and let's see what the call is. It is good. And so Georgia now leads 13-3, to and we'll be right back. The new front-wheel drive Hyundai Excel was designed by the same man who designed this Maserati. But they are a little different. The Excel has room for three more passengers. It's more economical, and it costs about $40,000 less. It's only $49.95. Of course, the Hyundai Excel doesn't go quite as fast as a Maserati, but in the long run, that may save you even more money. Hyundai, cars that make sense. Another 30 seconds of common sense. Walk into most automobile showrooms and ask to see something under $7,000, and you'll get very little show with a lot of room for improvement. But at Hyundai, you'll get seven Excel models for under $7,000, all thoroughly equipped and starting at only $49.95. And that leaves very little room for the competition. Test drive an Excel at one of these Orlando Hyundai dealers. We sell cars that make sense. Steve Crumley boots it off for the University of Georgia. It's going to come out of bounds on the Gator side at about the 18-yard line. Well, if he'd been playing golf, that would have been a duck Crumley hook. Out of <laughs> the winning attitude starts with individual performance combined with a strong team morale. Mid-State Federal Savings and Loan admires this spirit and is proud to be the exclusive sponsor of the Most Valuable Player of the Game Award, which will be announced at the conclusion of today's game. Mid-State Federal is Florida's full service financial center well there's an ancient instrument right there the straight ahead kicker he's got his toe tied back with a shoestring looks like he's out of the decade of the 50s instead of the decade of the 80s of course he's wearing white shoes and that tips it off i think that it's uh, in the 80s but nonetheless a straight ahead kicker very rarely seen in college football today eight plays 55 yards possession time 432 steve crumley's 35-yard field goal does the job for Georgia. They lead Florida 13-3, 9 minutes and 10 seconds to play in the second period. 
Seeing that foot reminds me of Wayne Shadetree Barfield. Lives in Gainesville, Florida right now. Kicked the winning field goal to beat Georgia 17-16 in 1967. A straight-ahead kicker. As I say, they're rarely seen these days. Just the last one I can think of. Maybe Mark Mosley for the Redskins was the last one I can think of. And, of course, the most famous practitioner of the art was George Blanda. From the 30-yard line now, Georgia will kick off, and they go deep, and it will be Kerry Watkins. He'll take it on the 5. He's across the 10. He's at the 15-yard line. He's at field at the 20-yard line. Turns outside. He's at the 25. Trying to turn it upfield. Taken out of bounds in front of the Georgia bench at the 31. But another nice return for the youngster from Pensacola. Well, what he shows for a freshman is a lot of Watkins patience. He doesn't get too Run anxious out, out there. Curry. And uh, when you have that patience and natural ability both, you're going to make some exciting things happen when you touch the football. And Kerry Watkins, extremely exciting. First and 10 on the 31-yard line now for the Florida Gators, and they're in Georgia territory. Georgia dominating offensively this afternoon thus far, 176 to 71. 26-yard return by Watkins, which means, of course, that that Gator defense has been hanging in there all afternoon once again. Well, Georgia could have 21 points, but they only have 13. Bell's pass incomplete. It was intended for Wayne Williams coming out of the backfield. The falls is incomplete as Florida has gone to the a and W backfield of Anthony Williams 36 and Wayne Williams number 23. That chemistry's just not there with Kerwin in his backs. Uh, we don't know whether Wayne Williams was running the proper route or Kerwin just couldn't get the ball to him right there. But uh, the chemistry, the interaction between the, the backs and the quarterback is just not there. 8:55 to play in the second quarter. Second and ten at the 31. As Kerwin looks to throw and goes long and it is. Complete. Almost picked off by Georgia. Stacy Simmons at the wide receiver spot was the intended receiver. Almost picked up on the bounce by Georgia. John Little, the safety, a senior from Lynn Haven, Florida, made the play. Kerwin's going to bootleg out. His guard, Bob Sims, is in front of him. Bob Sims almost gets too much depth. Kerwin makes the step. The ball's tipped away by the rover back. John Little, and he is the second leading tackler on the Georgia squad. He also, like Brantley, is from Florida. Kerwin Bell on third and 10 at the 31, throws, and it is picked off by Georgia. At the 35-yard line, nice interception by Miles Smith, number two, a junior from Roswell, Georgia. Intended for Darrell Willard. And so the Georgia Bulldogs really get a break here in the second quarter. Kerwin just doesn't get the zip on the ball that he hoped to right here, and Miles Smith simply steps in front of the wide receiver to make the interception. Excellent field position for Georgia on the turnover now on inside the Gators' 35-yard line, just about the 34 and a half. And he was playing at the uh, nickelback. He was the fifth back on the defense on that last play. We'll be right back after this. Hey, get up off the couch, get out of the chair, and get on down to New Giant Action Nissan, where we're dealing. Hey, listen to this. They made a closeout on these 1986 trucks, 6488 cash price, or zero down, $149 a month. Come on, please. You can't go grocery shopping for that. Hey, listen to this. They got automatic and air, and they're going to send you to Vegas for two. Can you believe it? Well, believe it, because it's true. We're at the New Giant Action Nissan. We'll see you real soon. A Delco Bose music system will make your favorite song sound even better. Every note rings true because the system is acoustically tuned to select GM models. Delco Bose delivers 100 watts of power, more than enough to dazzle your ears. And when that much power plays through premium Bose speakers, it's easy to get carried away. The Delco Bose music system. You'll love it too much to leave it. First and ten at the 35-yard line for the Bulldogs of Georgia after that interception. James Jackson at quarterback with the eye at formation. Florida's D digs in once again using four down linemen. And the give-off goes to Lars Tate off the left side. He carries it to maybe the 32-yard line or 33 before he's brought down by Pat Moore, the freshman 
from Pensacola, Florida, went to Escambia High School. Right now it's Todd Gatlin and Pat Moore in for the Gators at that inside linebacker position. They're alternating with Scott Armstrong and Arthur White all afternoon. James Jackson, such a threat, running the football and having success this season passing the football. Second and seven at the 32. As Jackson rolls, throws out in the flat, and it is incomplete. It was intended. It looked like for Doug Henderson coming out of the backfield, and Keith Williams was the pressure man, coverage man for the University of Florida, fighting Gator defense. Jackson bootlegs the football out to his right. Keith Henderson wide open. The ball just wasn't wasn't there for him. Third down, seven at the 32. 8.06 to play in the first half. Georgia leading Florida 13 to 3. Lars Tate now with 62 yards rushing the football. High formation and a receiver split to the top of the screen. James Jackson looks to throw, getting pressure from the Gator defense, scrambles out there. Clifford Charlton is chasing him, and he goes out of bounds in front of the Georgia bench on the far side as he gets inside the 30 to the 28-yard line, and Pat Moore takes him out. Adrian White makes the critical mistake here of letting the quarterback get outside. When you blitz, you got to blitz from outside in. This is not a drop back, stand there and throw the football type quarterback. This is a lot like Don Smith from Mississippi State. Uh, Jackson just has that ability to sprint, get outside. Adrian making the, the mental error right there of not maintaining containment. So Crumley's field goal will come from the 35 yard line, a 45 yard attempt. His foot is into it and let's see, it is good. And so the Georgia Bulldogs, thanks mostly to the foot of Steve Crumley, leading Florida 16 to three this afternoon. Seven minutes and 50 seconds to play in the second quarter, and uh, Georgia is pulling away from Florida 16 to three with the Gators. Offense has to do when they come back is to move the football consistently and get it into that end zone. Here's that. Ancient toe, straight ahead Edwin kicker. Report to the west side. He's deadly accurate. He is. They've had some great ones at Georgia too. Report Just remember to Mr. Kevin Butler, who's now kicking for the Chicago Bears, and the great years that he had for the Bulldogs. So the Georgia Bulldogs will be kicking off, and uh, Crumley will be booting away. Well, this game, uh, plenty of time left in the second quarter, seven minutes and 50 seconds. Uh, very important for that Gator offense to get back out there and control the football and answer the challenge of the Georgia Bulldogs and put points on the board, help the Gator defense out a little bit. Steve Crumley, a sophomore, and they didn't have to go too far to recruit him. He's from Athens. Crumley to kick off Watkins deep. We look at Kerry Watkins just a second ago as Crumley boots it high and Watkins will take it at the 11 comes to the near side of the field he's at the 15 turns up field at the 20 the 25 and he's across the 30 before he is taken down by Georgia but there's Watkins a flag the on the play yeah, an obvious That's clip on the, on the uh, Miles, kickoff return team the Gators clipping out there Jim Miles Smith makes the tackle for Georgia along with Brett Collins there's the scoring drive, four place, six yards, possession time, 53 seconds. Crumley's field goal does the job from 45 yards away. Gators could have had decent field position near the 30 yard line. Now they're gonna be backed up because of the clip. It'll move the football back to the 18 yard line. And it was for the hold the last 10 yards and against the Florida. 741 here as we count down the second quarter. Gators pinned near their own end zone inside the 20. And here comes Kerwin Bell. They go with a slot offense. And a split backfield. The give off to Octavius Gould. And he is hit and brought down behind the line of scrimmage. Brought Good down on, by Bill. John Brantley. By Brantley. The Floridian from Wildwood. John Brantley from Wildwood, Florida, the middle linebacker, makes the hit in the backfield. That play had no chance. They uh, 
Bulldog defense penetrated the line of scrimmage and were in the Gator backfield. That's the kind of defense they've always played. Second and 11 on the 17-yard line. You're right. The names change, the numbers change, but the quality of the play never changes. High formation. Kerwin Bell out in the flat. Complete to Ricky Natiel. And Natiel's taken out of bounds on the far side by Gary Moss, the right corner by Moss. Kerwin, Georgia. Excuse me. Kerwin saw the single coverage out there and wanted to get the ball to Natiel. He's so quick, so dangerous. But Gary Moss, the 195-pound senior cornerback, did an excellent job of forcing Ricky out of bounds. Third and four, I guess it is. At the 24-yard line. Slot to the right side, 6.55 to play in the first half. Georgia leading 16 to 3. Bell to throw, and he unloads. He's got Darrell Waller. The ball is loose. Let's see what the situation is. They're giving it to Georgia at the 30 yard line. Darrell Woolard was the receiver, and Greg Williams came up with a football for Georgia. Let's look at it. Willard gets open on his out route. The Gators with three wide receivers in. Willard's going to get hit. Uh, he has the football, makes the reception. Now he's going to get hit by Greg Williams, number 23. The ball is coughed up. Greg Williams continues to fight for the football, comes up with the fumble, too. After making the hit, he also gets the football. Darrell Willard was pretty shook up. Uh, I think his bell was rung on that last play so they have walked him off the field and now it's first and ten for Georgia at the 30 yard line of Florida tough situation for that Gator defense they've been on the field a lot this afternoon Georgia controlling the football now they have uh, two turnovers here's the second let's see what Georgia does if they take advantage of this fumble recovery James Jackson the quarterback has gone all the way for Georgia this afternoon and Jackson bumps into his own man, brought down behind the line of scrimmage. Henry As Brown, the Gators, like Pat Pinner gets in there, I think. Maybe, by uh, Brown. Or Henry Brown, Henry. we'll see. Let's look at it. Watch Henry Brown at the top of your screen. Pat Pinner in uh, Gators alternating personnel. There's Walter Bird in pursuit. There's Henry making the hit. That play just was uh, messed up from the word go. Breakdown on offense by the Bulldogs and the Gators penetrating the line of scrimmage on defense. Second and 13 at the 33-yard line for the Bulldogs of Georgia. Slot eye to the left side. The give off is to Tate and Tate brought down right as he hits the line of scrimmage. And Jeff Roth, the news guard from Seminole, Florida, makes the tackle. We look at uh, kicker Jeff Dawson, number 17. Number 16 is Jamie McAndrew, the punter. And number five is John David Francis. So the three kickers for Florida standing together. Third and 13 at the 33. Big down coming up for Georgia. And for the Gators. The Bulldogs looking. And it is Jackson dropping. He throws, and it is incomplete. In and out. At the hands of the intended receiver, John Thomas, 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 Thomas Ricky Mulberry, the coverage man for the Gators. The ball skipped, the ball bounced, but had it been delivered properly, a big reception there for Georgia. John Thomas was open, Ricky Mulberry on the coverage, but just a shade behind him. Jackson just wasn't able to get the ball there. Ifs and buts. So that makes it fourth down and 13 on the 33 officially. Kremley's kick will come from the 40. So we are talking about a 50-yard attempt as he gets ready to move to it. And he boots it. And it is no good. And so the score stands at 16 to 3 with 520 to play in the first half. And George is leading. So Crumley's kick is not good, and let's take a look at it from this angle. Well, he hit it right. Now Crumley gets hit, but I think he might have been blocked by number uh, 45, Kevin Jackson. If you're blocked into the kicker, if the blocker knocks your feet out from under you, then you're not penalized. It's not your fault. It's first and 10 at the 33 for Florida's Gators. As Tony Lomax splits to the bottom of the screen, their receivers left and right in a split backfield behind Kerwin Bell. His give off is going to go to the running back James Massey. And Massey is really swarmed under by Georgia. 
A lot of individual effort here by James Massey. This kid's got a great attitude, works very hard in practice, runs very hard when he gets a chance to handle that football. He gets hit near the line of scrimmage right there, but he's going to continue to fight, drive with the legs. Look at him move down the field. Number 60, Terry Webster, wasn't able to bring him down, even though he only picked up a yard or two. That was an excellent effort by James Massey. Second and seven at the 36-yard line. It was a tough three yards, though. The give-off goes to... No, Kerwin Bell hangs on to it and goes straight up the middle. And Anthony Williams... Anthony Williams was the guy who got the fake, but Kerwin hung on to the football. Let's look at it. Well, you see the frustration on Kerwin's face right there. He, he missed the handoff, I believe, the back. Was that Anthony Williams? Anthony Williams. Anthony Williams bellied out a little bit too far, and rather than risk the fumble, I think Kerwin kept the ball and was very frustrated with that mental breakdown right there. Third and seven at the 36-yard line for Florida, and Kerwin Bell drops. He's got time. He throws, and it is complete. He's got Simmons, and Simmons is going to first down in Georgia territory at the 41-yard line. Stacy Simmons, the 5'10", 175-pound freshman. John Little, the safety, makes the tackle. Well, Kerwin's going to take a big shot in the back right here as he delivers the football. Stacy Simmons Florida. makes the catch, and my goodness, does this freshman need the confidence that that play will give him. Anytime you're a wide receiver and your quarterback comes to you, you come up with a big catch. The next time you go back to the huddle, say, hey, throw me the football. And that's the kind of confidence young Stacy Simmons needs. He's a freshman from Clearwater, Florida, went to Dunedin High School. It's first and 10 at the 42-yard line. Slot I for the Gators as Kerwin Bell again looks to throw and does. And it is complete again, this time inside the 30-yard line to Ricky Natillo. As the Rocket makes the catch, Gary Moss, the right corner man, makes the tackle for the defense of Georgia. If Ricky Natillo did not slip right there, he first might have a Gary Moss. Ricky, so, so much speed, catches that football many times and makes that quick 360 turn, and the cornerback gets nothing but air. But right there, Gary Moss was close enough, and Ricky slipped. But nonetheless, it's a first down for the Gators. He has just moved into second place, past Wes Chandler on the all-time Florida career reception yardage record. And here is Kerwin Bell looking to throw, and does! He's got Massey, and Massey's inside the 20. And he drops the football, but they're going to say that it was not a fumble because the ground cannot cause a fumble. Very, very close. Uh, but let's back up to the line of scrimmage. Look at the protection. David Williams, Jeff Zimmerman, Frank McCarthy, Bob Sims, Charlie Wright. Also, Anthony Williams fighting with the fullback, giving Kerwin that protection. He, fought, he spots James Massey, the tailback. Oh, I don't know if his knee went down or not right there. That might have been a lucky break for the Gators right there. But they did whistle the ball dead. Nonetheless, it's no fumble. The Gators maintain possession. Second and one at the 20-yard line. Kerwin Bell again looking and throws. And he's got Massey, and Massey's inside the 10-yard line. To the eight before Jones and Gary Moss make the tackle. James Massey from Monticello. That's where Jack Youngblood came from, the great Gator defensive lineman. Look at the protection here for Kerwin Bell. Plenty of time hits James Massey wide open near the sideline. Watch this hit, dip the shoulder, boom. That's when you hit them. You become the hitter, not the hitty. Great blocking by David Williams and Bob Sims on the left side there for the Gators up front. First and goal at the nine yard line for Florida. Slot to the right side. Willard in the slot. Dropping, looking as Kerwin Bell goes for the end zone. Touchdown, Ricky Mateel. The Gators have scored. Plenty of time, Jim Gallagher up front. Ricky Mateel on the reception, beating the cornerback on single coverage, Greg Williams. Senior from Archer, Florida, went to Newberry High School. Ricky the Rocket Mateel has scored for the Gators. What's so important here is that the senior, Ricky Mateel, who had some uh, opportunities earlier this season to come up with the big plays and just wasn't able to do it. Two weeks in succession comes up with gigantic plays. Dawson with the kick, and it is good. Ewing with a hold and Bird with a snap, and suddenly we've got a brand new ball game here in Jacksonville's Gator Bowl. Georgia leading Florida by a score of 16 to 10. Let's take a look at that touchdown pass again. Look at the protection. No one is near him. Look at Mark McGriff fighting off 
at the top of your screen with the block, and there's the teal on Greg Williams one-on-one. -on -one. That's touchdown city. So Florida now within six of Georgia. Two minutes and 14 seconds left to play as we look at Galen Hall. He's got to be a lot happier about that turn of events. And there's 40,000 Gator fans here in Jacksonville at the Gator Bowl that are a lot happier with that turn of events. The ebb and flow of this game. Uh, what an exciting ball game we're witnessing right here. Both teams have the ability to score. Both teams have proven to the other one that they can score. So could be a lot of points on that scoreboard this afternoon before it's all over. John David Francis sophomore will be kicking. Lane and Lewis will be the deep guys in the receiving position for Georgia. And Francis gets a lot of foot into it, and it's going to be taken by Lane at the four. He's at the 10 to 15, across the 20, and up across the 25 to the 28-yard line. Before he's tackled. Brought down by the University of Florida's Basil Benjamin, number 25. Uh, Senior from Pahokee, Florida. All right, now we've got two minutes and eight seconds. That's a lot of time. One, one of the things the Gator defense has to think about is let's do not let Georgia score again right here before the half. Let's shut them down, maybe even give, give their own offense a chance to get the ball back. First and 10 at the 28 yard line for the Georgia Bulldogs. The pitch is going to go to Tate. He cuts up field and he's across the 30 to the 33 yard line. So he gets about five on that carry. And that's what he's averaging, Jim. A shade over five that's yards per carry. You're looking at a Georgia team that averages 120 yards more than the Gators do running the football. Armstrong and Moore make the tackle. Seven plays, 66 yards. Possession time, 306. Ricky the Rocket and Teal. And he gets the touchdown pass from Kerwin Bell. 140 to play first half. 16 to 10. Sadowski 87 at the tight end spot on the right side. The give off again is to Tate, and he hits into the line and gets to the 35. Clifford Charlton, the junior from Tallahassee, makes Carlton. the tackle. The Gators thinking about calling timeout right here. They want to save as many as they can if they can shut Georgia down with this third down attempt right here. Georgia might be forced to punt. You know, the Georgia punter has yet to hit the field this afternoon, and he doesn't even qualify in Southeastern Conference stats because he hardly ever gets on the field. That tells you something. Tate has picked up almost 70 yards this afternoon. It's third and three at the 35. High formation for the Bulldogs as Jackson looks and goes long, and it is incomplete. It was intended deep for Nathaniel Lewis, number eight, and Adrian White, good coverage, number two. Adrian White, the safety, has to get over there to make that play, but the ball was overthrown. Adrian was there in coverage. Here comes the punt team. Okay, now this will be the first punt of the day for Chris Carpenter. The snap is going to come from Jeff Smith. He's had 25 punts for just under 44 yards per boot, 43.9 every time he kicks. Only 25 Carpenter times he's been on the field. That's amazing. 52 seconds to play in the first half. Now there's a timeout for the University of Georgia. Evidently, they didn't have the people on the field that they needed to punt that football, and they weren't going to have a, a mistake. They don't want the Here's leaders to come up with a block, to so they call a timeout and stop the clock. The Certainly, they didn't stop the clock in an attempt to help Florida's cause, but they didn't have the number of people or the proper people on the field. We look at uh, Galen Hall talking with Dan Coglin and Ty Smith on the sideline about the way things are going in the first half. The Gators trailing by six, coming back very nicely after that drive with a touchdown. No doubt about it that coming out of the shoot after the kickoff, Georgia just absolutely positively controlled this football game. But then the Gators fought back late in the first quarter. Most of the second quarter, the Gators have fought toe-to-toe, -toe, nose to nose with the Georgia Bulldogs. And what an exciting ball game we have right now with Georgia in the lead, 16 to 10. Probably one of the differences, too, is the way that that offensive line began to come off the ball. It well, was great blocking on that last touchdown drive. Well, as we mentioned in the uh, pregame show, uh, as we were talking on the sideline, you've got to control the line of scrimmage in this game of all games. Fourth and three at the 35 officially, and Carpenter is waiting on the snap. 
He gets it off. It's going to go high and really sail. Watkins drops all the way back, takes it at the four, and then reverses his field and is swarmed under at the four-yard line, and there's a flag on the play. A flag on the play Watkins inside the, the five-yard line at the four. Or he might have just been marking the spot and uh, didn't throw his little white bag. He might have just thrown the flag, uh, but no, it was a flag. Let's see what the call is going to be. There was a swarm of Georgia Bulldogs on Kerry Watkins. Was that ball ever boomed? My goodness. <laughs> I thought it was going to bring rain. It went so high. 38 seconds to play in the first half. Well, Kerry catches the ball inside his own five-yard line. You should put your heels on the 10. If the ball goes over your head, you let it go in the end zone and take your chances. Steve Loden was trying to help out Kerry Watkins right there. All right, now what the Gators got to do. Moves the ball back to about the two-yard line. I remember, uh, was it 84 that Kerwin dropped back and hits Ricky Natil sprinting down the sideline? But I doubt very seriously that they might try that kind of play. I think they're just going to be conservative and try and inch the ball out of there, hope the clock will run out and uh, Georgia won't get the benefit of having excellent field position with the football. First and 10 at the two-yard line, 38 seconds to play. Kerwin Bell at the line, and he is at the two. Just goes straight ahead into the line. Nice, safe play, which is what the uh, Gators want to do. No handoff. That's, no. The, that's the safest play, okay. and that's the play that should run. Now, they might not try it again, but I would think they will. I think they'll just quarterback sneak it and hope the clock runs out. Kerwin's not even trying to get in the huddle right now. And that's exactly the smart thing to do. Go to the locker room trailing 10 to 16, and the game is very much in doubt for both, both schools. That's what the Gators are going to do. Just let the clock run out. And uh, George is leading Florida by a score of 16 to 10. The Gators have just put together a very nice touchdown drive. And Ricky Natil uh, scored the touchdown on the pass reception. And so that means at the half that uh, Florida trailing six points, the margin right now being the two field goals by Crumley, who has been very, very accurate. Possibly the Gators might have answered uh the question as to whether they can stop that powerful Georgia Bulldog running game. I don't think you can stop it consistently, but I think they can stop it enough to force Georgia to give the ball up on occasion to the Gator offense. And then with Kerwin Bell's ability to throw that football, you know that the Gators have the potential to put points on the board. It remains to be seen whether they can do that or not. But you know the Gator offense has the potential. You know Georgia has the potential. Who's to say what's going to happen? Well, I think it'll be an exciting second half, and we'll be back with the halftime festivities. But first, time out for these messages. We're back, getting ready to begin the second half of play. It was an interesting first half. As you can see here, the statistics, rushing-wise, it's Georgia. Passing-wise, it's Florida. And as far as the passing percentages are concerned, well, the Gators, 11 out of 16, and Georgia, 3 for 8. Penalties, 3 for 12 for Florida, 2 for 10 for Georgia. Clean game, and two turnovers for Florida, none for Georgia. Possession time, Georgia's had it 18 minutes. Florida, 11 minutes, 54 seconds. No surprises, really. Georgia comes into this ball game with a powerful running game. The Gators come in with Kerwin Bell, who has the ability to throw the football. Late in the, uh, early in the second quarter, the Gators only had 76 yards total offense. At the halftime, they had 150, and they held Georgia to 14 yards most of the second quarter. So the Gators really turned things around, took control, and are back in this ball game. 16-10, Georgia leads. They're getting ready to kick off and it will be Steve Crumley who has three field goals on the board this afternoon for Georgia as he kicks away. Kerry Watkins on the six. Across the 10, the 15. Cuts up field at the 20-yard line and is still on his feet and fighting and he is across the 30 to the 36-yard line. What a great run back by Kerry Watkins. Absolutely, Watkins positively, Kerry. but why did the Gators wave the selection to receive in the first half because of now. They want the football now. They want it to kick off the second half. They want the football as we start the second half. Look at Kerry Watkins with his effort. One tackle, two tackles. Throws that tackler into the turf right there. Continues to fight, almost breaks it loose. 
31 yard return by the young freshman. The Gators in excellent field position on their own 32 yard line. First and 10 for the Gators. They're at the 37 yard line and Kerwin Bell is looking to throw and he's brought down behind the line. Brought down at the 31 yard line by Henry Harris. The left guard defensively for Georgia. Battle so Harris. Kerwin goes down as the blitz pressures him out of the pocket. It's John Brantley, 42, that breaks clear of the tailback's block. Massey wasn't able to get there in time. Big Henry, Henry Harris makes the tackle for the sack. Gators go backwards on their first play, not what they wanted to do. Second and 16 for the Gators at the 31-yard line. Kerwin Bell with a slot offense to the left side, a split backfield behind him. And Bell gives off on the delayed draw to Anthony Williams, who's across the 35 to the 37-yard line with the carry. Brought down by Steve Boswell, weak side linebacker for Boswell the Georgia defense. And Jones. A record crowd here today, 81,957 fans at Jacksonville's Gator Bowl. And Jim, it looks like Kerwin Bell is in strong running for our vote as the Mid-State Federal Player of the Game. Of that 81,000 plus, there's not one of those folks that is neutral. That's right, third and nine for the Gators as Kerwin Bell throws, and he's got Ricky Natillo, and it looks like he's got the first down. He's got the first down to the 48-yard line. This is the kind of ball game that we all expected Ricky Natillo to have consistently. Coming into this his senior season, he was one of the premier receivers, not only in the South, but in the nation, and he's showing what he can do this afternoon. Last week, he comes off a big a, a lot of success against Auburn, but unfortunately now it looks like Natil is limping off the field with that partially separated shoulder that he incurred against the Auburn Tigers last week. Vince Guthrie brings him down on first and 10 from the 48. Bells give off to James Massey who rips it to the 40-yard line. That was a 10-yard pickup for Natil. And Will Jones, the rover from Atlanta, Georgia, makes the tackle. All right, let's watch Frank McCarthy. Look at the block right there by Frank. Look at big Bob Sims making the hit right there on the inside linebacker. Massey's in the secondary quickly. James Massey from Monticello, Florida. But the big guys up front are doing the job. That was a 12-yard gain by the 40, by number 42, James Massey, the tailback. First and 10 at the 40-yard line. And the give-off by the Gators is going to go to James Massey, but he is brought down by Henry Harris. The dog sniffed that one out, so to speak, and they were right there. This telecast of Gator football is being seen by fans all over the state of Florida and the United States. No matter where you are, we'd like to hear from you. Send us a card or letter with a self-addressed stamp envelope, and we'll send you a Gator bumper sticker and a Gator keychain. Your comments are also welcome. Send your card or letter to Gator Television Network, Post Office Box 14485, Gainesville, Florida, 3260. Four. Second down, 13 at the 43. Snap and a fumble, loose ball, and it's recovered at the 46-yard line by Anthony Williams. Georgia looks like they jumped across the line of scrimmage. There's a lot of yelling that goes on out there. Frank McCarthy thinks he hears the snap or either did not know what the snap count was and snapped prematurely, and the ball goes up for grabs. Kerwin's hit, wrestled to the ground the ball's laying there and I think Massey got the fumble but uh, that was a could have been a critical mistake now the Gators face third and long at the 46 yard line third and 15 for Florida Kerwin Bell looking to throw he rolls out of the pocket being chased he lets go and it is incomplete incomplete pass as Kerwin Bell couldn't find anybody open and let it sail and the Georgia fans are pretty unhappy about that Jamie McAndrew will come in to punt. I think Kerwin was trying to hit his uh, father-in-law, Levis Odom, in the stands with that one. <laughs> uh, but that's what he had to do, throw the ball away. And he almost did it to the extent they might perhaps could have flagged him right there. But what have the Gators done? They've pushed Georgia down the field and now are going to punt. And perhaps Georgia will be backed up deep in their own territory. And booting is McAndrew. He really sails it. And Little watches it go out of bounds here along the sideline as it goes out of bounds on the Gator side at about the 14-yard line. Good coverage by the Florida special teams on that play. Ricky Mulberry was right down there. Well, the 
Gators had some success with that drive, but they might have lost their star wide receiver, Ricky Mateo. We'll have to wait to see if he comes back in the game. But they did get some momentum. They do have the fans on their feet. And let's see if that Gator defense can shut down the powerful dogs as the dogs have their first attempt here in the second half. The first time they had the ball in the first half, they went all the way down the field. 39-yard punt. First and 10 at the 14-yard line. The pitch is going to go to Tate. Tate trying to turn it upfield, and he gets to the 20-yard line before he's taken down by Scott Armstrong. So a six-yard carry. Keith Williams fighting outside, fighting outside, trying to make Lars Tate turn inside. Scott Armstrong finally hustling over from the inside linebacker position. The senior from Ocala making the hit, but that was a healthy five-yard gain by Lars Tate. Second down and five on the 19-yard line. So they call it a five-yard pickup. I formation, receiver to the left side. And the give off is going to go to the fullback, McCluskey. He goes straight up the middle and gets uh, maybe a yard before Rondy Weston, big sophomore tackle from Belglade, makes the hit. And you see the Bulldogs, Jim Gallagher, lining up with two tight ends. What that means is, hey, guys, we're going to come up to the line of scrimmage, and we're going to knock you off of it, and we're going to run the football, and we don't care if you know it or not. Georgia's got that kind of attitude right now, but the Gators were able to stuff that play nonetheless. Third and four or five. At the 21-yard line, James Jackson at the quarterback slot with a split backfield behind him, and Jackson rolling out to the left, throws, and it is incomplete. Nice hit there by Jarvis, Jarvis Williams, Williams on the uh, intended receiver. Oh, my goodness, did he really put a hit on David McCluskey. David McCluskey, the fullback, is going to get hit in the flat by the policeman in the secondary, Jarvis Williams. Watch Jarvis come up. The ball is up for grabs. A clean hit. That's what football is all about. Hit him right face to face. Face mask to face mask, nose to nose. That's rough, tough, sock and football. The ball bounces harmlessly to the ground. The dogs are forced to punt. Rarely do we see the dogs in punt formation. Fourth and three at the 21. And Carpenter booms it. It's going to go high. Watkins will field it at the 38-yard line, and he's wrestled out of bounds here along the near sideline by the University of Georgia's third corner, number 83. Gary taking a bit of a chance right there. One, one thing you do is you take your eye off the ball when you look and see what kind of pursuit you're getting, what kind of coverage you're getting. He took his eye off the ball to check out the coverage, and then he had to look back up into that bright sun, but fortunately, he found the football. That was a 41-yard boot for Carpenter. And now coming to the line on first and 10 from the 38-yard line, the University of Florida Gators. Kerwin Bell with an eye formation. They've got a slot, and the slot would be to the left side. Georgia using three down linemen. Their linebackers playing right in the gaps. Frazier one was the motion man, and Massey on the counter gets the call. Goes about a yard before Larry Brown makes the hit. So difficult to run against the Georgia Bulldogs Matthew because Terry. of that split six Scott defense, Brown. as they call it. Bob but what Brown. they really do is they line up eight guys near that line of scrimmage and say, you cannot run the football on us. We're going to have eight guys crowding that football, and we're not going to let you run. And they've had some success stopping the Gators, who have not had tremendous success themselves running the football all season. Second and nine at the 39-yard line for the Gators off the eye. It is Bell looks to throw and does, and it is incomplete. It was intended for Anthony Williams coming out of the backfield, and he cannot hang on to it. John Brantley, the middle linebacker. Good coverage for the uh, Georgia Bulldogs. Three wide receivers, no tight ends that last time. A lot of pressure by Aaron Chubb, a 6'4", 210-pound sophomore, Coming from the bottom of your screen, putting pressure on Kerwin, delivering a vicious hit as Kerwin tried to get the ball to Anthony Williams. Nine minutes and seven seconds to play in the third period. Third down nine on the 39 for Florida. They trail Georgia by six. 16 to 10 is the score. Kerwin Bell forced out of the pocket, scrambles out, looking for somebody, unloads, and it is short. It was intended for his fullback coming out of the back, or sorry, intended for Ricky Mateo coming uh, off the left side but falls is incomplete so that brings up fourth down and he threw it away on purpose he didn't have what he wanted so he threw it into the ground intentionally very smart play georgia comes out stops the gators twice in succession but kerwin doesn't give up the interception doesn't make the unwise throw 
threw it into the ground. Now the Gators are going to punt. McAndrew, two punts, 39.5 this afternoon on fourth and nine from the 39. As he sails it, and he sails it high, John Little, 19, calls for it. Fair catch at the 27-yard line. Fair so the Georgia Bulldogs get the football there. A nice, uh, smooth play by Little, special teams guy. And uh, for from, the University of Georgia. Yeah, he's the senior. What an impressive player from Lynn Haven, Mosley High School, out in Panama City. John Little, just a tremendous uh, career at the University of Georgia, playing the rover and today playing the safety position. Henderson and Tate in the backfield now. Henderson, the up back, behind a quarterback, James Jackson. Jackson gives off to Tate, and Tate is hit hard at the 25-26 yard line. Clifford Charlton, the outside linebacker, makes the hit. Clifford Charlton, Tallahassee Leon. Watch at the top of your screen. Clifford's going to bend around the blocking attempt. Right there, the fullback runs right by him. Clifford makes the hit. When you're not blocked, you got a, a lot more chance of making the tackle right there, and the fullback ran right by Clifford Charlton. Second and nine on the 26-yard line. High formation with a slot to the left side. James Jackson, the quarterback, rolling and looks and throws, and it is incomplete. Good coverage by Florida's Lewis Oliver, number 18. It was intended for David Dukes, a junior from Athens, Georgia, at split end. The safety, Lewis Oliver, and... Jarvis Williams, I believe it was, the cornerback, both there at the same time the ball arrived. Georgia having little success throwing the football here late. Doesn't mean they can't do it. They've proven early in this ball game they know how to throw the football as well as run the football, but the Gator defense is shining right now with pass defense. Third and nine at the 26 yard line is put backfield behind James Jackson. As Florida digs in, and Jackson looking to throw, turns up field, and is brought down. Let's see if he's got the first down. He's got the first down. He's across the 35 to about the 37-yard line, and Kerry Watkins makes the tackle for Florida. Jackson takes off so quickly here. I don't know if this was a quarterback draw or not. I think he just felt the pressure of the linebackers. And uh, Keith Williams also was in pursuit. He just took off. It looked like a quarterback draw. He turns it into a first down, a broken play. A broken play by James Jackson turns into a first down for the Georgia Bulldogs. First and 10 at the 37-yard line for the Bulldogs, and the give-off is going to go to their up-back Henderson, and he rips it close to the midfield stripe. I think he's got another first down. Lewis Oliver and Adrian White, and there's a flag on the play. I think Jarvis Williams and... David Dukes, the wide receiver, got in a bit of a skirmish in the secondary. You can't lose your poise in the heat of the battle. You cannot lose your poise in the heat of the battle, but it looks like in the secondary there was some, some fisticuffs as we see Henderson, who was uncertain whether that young man was going to play today or not. He gets hit by Adrian White, and there's another 15 yards. Or was it five? Did they add on five? Because it's a dead ball. All right, five okay. yards added. So that puts the football at the 30-yard line, really giving Georgia great field position. Or I'm sorry, at the 35-yard line. It's first and 10 at the 35-yard line with 7.34 to play in the third period. Now McCluskey's in at fullback. Jackson, the quarterback, he's gone all the way this afternoon, and he has just been super. The pitch goes to Tate. Tate turns up field across the 30 and down to the 29-yard line. Scott Armstrong and Lewis Danger. Oliver for Florida. George is so impressive when they get in a groove. You know, they get in a groove with that running game, and those backs are quick and agile and strong, and Lars Tate was 79 yards right here at this point in this ball game. 19 attempts. He seems to get stronger. The Georgia offense seems to get stronger sometimes in the second half when they get in a groove running that football. Receivers left and right, the eye formation, and Tate again brought down behind the line of scrimmage at the 33-yard line. Henry Eight. Brown, number 99, uh, Jim Gallagher. What happened right there is there was no movement up front. He tried for that cutback, and he ran into three Gators. He's going to try and get around the left side, but there's nothing there. Now he's going to cut back, but oh, my goodness, there's Clifford Charlton and Jeff Roth and Henry Brown, three Gators putting the hat on him. 
Third and eight now at the 33-yard line for Georgia. Driving on Florida in the third period of play. Jackson rolling, turns up the old, doesn't get the first down. He's inside the 30 to about the 27-yard line, but doesn't pick Jackson up the first Barry. down. He's going to be short. They might go for it. They did earlier in the ball game, but no, it looks like they're a healthy two yards short, so they're going to come out with the uh, field goal team. Well, Crumley has been very, very accurate this afternoon, missing only one, and that one, I think, was from about 50 yards away. Don't ever be lulled to sleep. You know, in every playbook is the fake field goal and Georgia has nine points as a result of the field goal missed another attempt well Chris Carpenter who is the punter number six will hold the kick will come from the 33 a 43 yard attempt and it is good and the score is now Georgia 19 Florida 10 we'll be right back Remember when you were a little girl or boy and your mother or father used to make you fresh, delicious sandwiches until you got the station wagon? <laughs> yeah, give me a break! I'm not in the mood for style of food. Give me the fresh alternative. I'm in the Subway mood. Subway Sub Shops, the fresh alternative. The laughter of children, the warmth of holidays, the serenity of still autumn mornings, a place to rest and dream and grow, to be secure. The people of Ryland understand what makes a house a home. That understanding strengthens our commitment to build homes of quality, value, and integrity. If you'd like the tax advantages of owning your own home but think you can't afford it, see Saturday's Sentinel. Our low down payment plans can make it possible. Ryland homes are built for life. George has just scored with a field goal and they kick off. Gary Watkins will take it on the two for Florida. He's across the five, the 10. He's at the 15 yard line, the 20, and taken down at the 23 yard line by the Georgia special team. So Gary Watkins, another nice return, and number 83, Kirk Warner, makes the tackle for the Bulldogs. It'll be first and 10 now at the 23 for Florida. They trail by nine, 19 to 10. We've got 5.20 to play in the third quarter. Eight plays, 47 yards, using up 323 on the clock. Steve Crumley kicks his fourth field goal of the game. The Bulldogs are ahead, 19 to 10. Here is Kerwin Bell. They go with a slot eye. Frazier is checking into the ball game now. He'll be in the slot to the right side as Bell looks to throw. Bell unloads, and he has got Hodges at the 37-yard line. Eric Hodges, the senior walk-on from Philadelphia. John Brantley, the middle linebacker, makes the tackle. When you get this kind of protection, your receivers can get deep in the secondary. Uh, Billy, Eric Hodges, runs the hook and Kerwin pumps and then delivers right beyond the linebackers and just in front of Greg Williams. Greg Williams, number 23, the cornerback. Eric Hodges, the fifth-year walk-on senior. First and 10 at the 37-yard line now for Florida as they drive on Georgia. They're trailing by nine, and the giveoff is going to go to Wayne Williams. He takes it to the 44-yard line. Wayne Williams. Good block there by Charlie Wright, the right guard. Henry Harris, the left guard defensively, makes a tackle for Georgia. Four minutes, 39 seconds to play, third quarter. If you're going to throw with success, you got to run once in a while. you got to have them respect your run once in a while, and that was a decent running play right there. It's second down and four at the 43 for the Gators. Bell's give off again goes to Wayne Williams, and he hits to the line of scrimmage, but there's a flag on the play. Big Henry Harris, number 52. He's what they call in the trades a load. I mean, he is like a pickup <laughs> truck load out there. Number 52. He is big enough to go to work. Well, he was a load. He was an offsides load right there. I think he might have lined up too near the football. He was squeezing down on the guard, trying to take the gap. And he took the gap successfully, defeated the plate, but I think he might have lined up offsides. And he's too big to hide. He, can't, he hasn't been able to sneak around on anybody for a while. Yeah, they list him at 265, but that's on a bad day. He weighs 265. <laughs> that was after his lettuce diet. And before lunch. First and 10 at the 48-yard line now for Florida. 
split backfield in a slot offense to the left side. The Gators with three wide receivers. Kerwin Bell goes long, and it's complete to the 25-yard line to Darrell Willard, the freshman from Eastside High School in Gainesville. Okay, you know why this, this play is so pretty is because watch that protection. They're rushing four men, but they don't even get close. One look, two looks, three looks. Now he's going to wait for Willard, who has time to get way deep in the secondary. Stretch that secondary, and John Little can't come over and make the play. So the Gators with first down and 10. Ball on the 25-yard line. Willard playing an excellent game. Willard from Gainesville, East Side High School. Those two Gators pointing the way. Dropping back is Bell. He's got the time. He throws, and it is complete to Massey coming out of the backfield. He's inside the 20, and they're going to give him to the 17-yard line. James Massey with the catch. Vince Guthrie, sophomore from Lithonia, Georgia, the left end, made the tackle. You know, Phil Welton, our director in the truck, is pointing out the contribution that the Gator freshmen are making this afternoon. Stacy Simmons, Mark McGriff. Daryl Woolard, the freshmen, are really coming to the forefront here against one of the biggest rivalries the Gators uh, ever played, the Georgia Bulldogs. And those are true freshmen, too. Second and two at the 17-yard line for Florida. The give off is to Anthony Williams. He might have the first down. We'll see. Anthony Steve Williams Boswell, weak side linebacker, makes the tackle. Five, Anthony Williams, a big, strong fullback from Tampa. Plant, you got to have respect with your running game, and they're getting it. They're getting it on this drive. They're passing and running the football. Two minutes and 43 seconds to play in the third quarter, and we'll be right there. We're going to keep it here. <laughs> now, let's keep it here, and let's talk about this. As the Gators get closer to that goal line, it gets harder and harder. Well, they just picked up that first down. Just got that first down. If you remember last year, uh, Jim Gallagher, Kerwin got over 400 yards or something like that, throwing the football, went up and down the field between the 20s. But once they got close, Georgia shut them out, shut them down, wouldn't let them in the end zone. Let's see if they can turn the tide here this afternoon. Not only move the ball between the 20s, but get it in the end zone. They've got it to the 15. It's first and 10. And here is Kerwin Bell with the slot to the left side. And Bell drops, rolls, throws, and he's got Massey, and Massey is inside the 10-yard line at the 9. James Massey, the junior from Monticello, makes the catch. Will Jones, the rover, the tackle for Georgia. What's so impressive about Kerwin Bell is he throws the ball so accurately and with zip on it when he doesn't have his footwork set up. Here he's backing up, he's, and he's going to take a step sideways, a little three-quarter action over overhand delivering the ball to Massey. Kerwin can come with the underhand. He can come with a sidearm. He can deliver the classic drop back pass. A lot of ability in that outstanding quarterback, Kerwin Bell. Second down at five at the 10. Kerwin Bell looks end zone. Touchdown, Florida. Ricky Natale on the blitz. On the blitz, Jim Gallagher. Ricky Natale gets one on one coverage. Greg Williams cannot stay with him in the corner. Anthony Williams, the fullback, picks up the linebacker. Brantley gives Kerwin an extra second. Greg Williams overruns. Natil eyeballs the ball right into his hands. A big six for Ricky Natil, the senior. 19 to 16. Jeff Dawson will try the extra point. He boots it and kicks it through. And it's a 19 to 17 ball game here in Gainesville and will be right back. What a ball game. To know no boundaries, to let yourself run free. To know no boundaries is what the world should be. Wherever there are investment opportunities, Merrill Lynch is there with the help you need to make the most of them. Because at Merrill Lynch, we believe your world should know no boundaries. To know no Nothing cuts through thirst like Gatorade Thirst Quencher. It quenches the thirst in your throat while it helps put back the potassium, fluids, and minerals your body sweats away. Gatorade is thirsty. 
We're back at the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville as we look at an alligator. What a rock and sock and ball game we have. You know what these guys have done now? They just rolled the ball out in the alley and said, all right, we're going to fight for this football. Who wants it? We're going to fight for this football game. Who wants it? Henderson at the 11. He's at the 15, the 20, the 25. He's across the 30. And all the way to the 40 yard line what a return by Keith Henderson and finally brought down by Dwayne Glover Shades seven plays 77 right yards possession time 318 Ricky Mateo's nine yard pass from Kerwin Bell shades of Brent Fullwood right here Brent Fullwood not only can run with a football from the line of scrimmage he can return kickoffs and here goes Keith Henderson Henderson, the sophomore, had such a great game last year against the Florida Gators. First and ten at the 44-yard line. It is James Jackson at the quarterback. Oh, wow. Loose ball on the field. Recovered by Florida at the 40. Steve Stipe makes the recovery, number 95. But who makes the hit? What a vicious hit. Maybe Pat Moore, Moore number 45. Let's see if we get another chance. Stipe was all over the football, but was Lars Tate ever hit on that one? Here goes Georgia's first turnover, I believe, of the afternoon. The Gators had two in the first half. Let's see if we can pick up the hit on the tailback from the I formation. McCluskey with the block. Oh, no, it's Arthur White from Crossbrook. Inside linebacker, Arthur White, the junior, with a vicious hit on the tailback. 1.56 to play in the third quarter, first and 10 at the 41-yard line of Georgia for the Gators. And the give-off goes to the fullback, and he's stacked up as he hits the line. Anthony Williams stacked up right away. Ronnie Smith from the University of Georgia, number 70, makes the tackle. We've got Ronnie Smith listed as a defensive back. He's got a 70 on his jersey out there. He's near that line of scrimmage. It doesn't matter what's on your jersey at Georgia. You're going to crowd that football on defense. <laughs> It doesn't matter if you're light you're supposed to be a safety. You're going to be about five yards away from that football. Second and ten at the 41-yard line for Florida. Slot I, the slot would be to the right side as Kerwin Bell drops and looks. He's got the time. He goes long. He's got Hodges inside the 15. Eric Hodges catches the football inside the 15-yard line, beating Miles Smith. Miles Smith didn't have a chance right there, Jim Gallagher, Gallagher, because the protection is so strong up front. No one even gets close. They're rushing five men. Kerwin hits Billy, the senior. Eric Hodges from Philadelphia. We mentioned the kids in the locker room calling Philly, and boys, he's shining out there this afternoon. Well, it's fitting that a guy from Philadelphia should catch a pass from someone named Bell. First and 10 at the 14-yard line. I formation, slot to the left side. Kerwin Bell's give off is gonna go to Massey, and Massey inside the 10 yard line to the nine and a half. I mean, that was sheer effort by James Massey, the junior from Monticello Jefferson County High School. And late in the fourth quarter, Jim and I will pick the Mid-State Federal Player of the Game. At the end of the season, a scholarship will be awarded to the university in honor of the Mid-State Federal Player of the Game. 26 seconds, 25 seconds. The clock ticks down here in the third quarter. The Gators are threatening on the 10-yard line of the Georgia Bulldogs. Second and a healthy six, it looks like. Here comes Kerwin Bell on second down, just inside the 10. Bell throws, looking for Natio, incomplete. He was looking for that pass play, which they have scored on before. Gary Moss, good coverage, number three. Gary had seen, I'm sure, the Auburn films all week long. Gary Moss, Moss an excellent cornerback right there on the teal, step for step. Ricky breaking to the sideline. That kid's playing with a injured shoulder. He gets a red badge of courage out there award this afternoon. He can hardly lift his arm up, but he keeps going back on the field. He keeps going back on the field. Third down and six. The ball is at the 10. Hodges in the slot to the left side. They've got an eye. Anthony Williams is the up back. Kerwin Bell 
gives off, and the give off goes to Massey, and Massey's inside the five to the three. He's going to be close to the first down. All right, Mike Heimerdinger and Galen Hall, who are in charge of calling the plays for the Gators, come up with a beautiful call right here. A quick draw action, and they get very, very close. They do have a first down. And that is the end of the third quarter. We'll be right back after this. It doesn't happen often, but Kissimmee Toyota's truck drive away sale is on now. Due to a factory commitment, Kissimmee Toyota must sell over 100 trucks and vans now before our deadline. Drive away your best deal from hundreds of special ordered models at rock bottom prices and the lowest finance rate. Plus, $500 cash to you. Hurry and get your one-time only drive-away truck deal. Only at Kissimmee Toyota. We'll earn your truck business. High lie, high lie, high lie. You're missing it. You haven't been. Win the giant twin trifecta and pick six. Get it all. Big in win, big in sport, big in action. Now's the time to highlight your life. Go where the stars are. Rufino, Ara, Eduardo, and Mandy. Nightly at 7, matinees, Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. Get lucky. Go for it. Big in play, big in pay. Go highlight your life. Go Orlando High Lie. Oh, Lord. It's hard to be humble when you're perfect in every way. For some time now, K92FM has been bringing you these fun country sing-alongs. That's K92FM at 92 on your FM dial. K92FM plays absolutely the most country music with hardly any talk or interruption. Mama, don't let your babies grow up to be cowboys. Continuous country favorites on K92FM. Hi, my name is Clarence Kears, General Manager of Clark Chrysler Plymouth, and I'm here to show you that you can buy a brand new Chrysler for only $300 down, and that's all. There's no hidden charges. Bring only $300 and select from over 350 new cars, including this all-new 1987 Horizon America and this luxurious 87 Fifth Avenue. Bring $300 to Clark Chrysler Plymouth on 436 in Castleberry and drive your new Chrysler home today. Clark Chrysler Plymouth has the deal worth driving for. Here it is, Jim Yarbrough. Let's take a look at it. Great call by the offensive brain thrust of the Gators. A quick trap, and look at Massey. Almost sprints into the end zone, but one Georgia Bulldog drags, drags him down at the two. Big first down. First and goal on maybe the three, they're calling it. Two and a half, possibly. As we start the fourth quarter, Georgia leads Florida 19 to 17. Florida's got it. First and goal at the three. 15 minutes of incredible, exciting football ahead of us this afternoon. Right now, both these teams with all kinds of ability to pull this game out. Florida currently trailing but threatening. Georgia always threatening. Georgia winning eight out of the last ten battles between these teams who are here in Jacksonville. Here come the Gators out of the huddle. Split backfield of Massey and Anthony Williams behind Kerwin Bell. Two tight ends. And a receiver split wide to the right. The motion man is Hodges now coming off the right side. The call goes to Massey. End zone. Touchdown, Florida. The Gators have scored. James Massey was not knocked off his feet. Credit that offensive line. Bob Sims, Charlie Wright, Frank McCarthy. Watch him come off the ball. Watch Anthony Williams, the fullback. No one hits him until he's on the goal line. I think it was number 45, uh, Kevin... Jackson, or maybe it was Boswell, 44, tried to make the hit. Massey just bowled him over into the end zone. Florida 23, Georgia 19. The Gators get ready to go for the extra point. Jeff Dawson will kick, Ewing will hold. He splits the uprights. It's 24 to 19 here in Gainesville, and we'll be right back after this. Just thinking about the chicken plate from Sonny's Real Pit Barbecue makes my mouth water. I'm talking about plump, tender chicken with Sonny's great barbecue goodness cooked right through and served up with Sonny's special coleslaw, fries, and garlic bread. Oh, now that's good eating at Sonny's near you. Everybody loves to eat at Sonny's, because Sonny's makes it all taste right. Where we talk tomorrow? I'm on Easter. Panama City. If 
business is taking you to Latin America. With just one phone call, Eastern Airlines can get you to more cities in Latin America from more cities in North America than anyone and pamper you with our famous El Interamericano service. Welcome to Santiago. Eastern, your airline to all the Americas. Well, we think it's John Brantley who has a chance to make the hit right here. He does, but he's bowled over by Massey. Massey has that low center of gravity. Just an excellent ball carrier. Nice to see him having success out there this afternoon as Octavius Gould is injured. There's the kick, and it's going out of bounds here along the near sideline at about the 14-yard line. There's that duck hook comes back. Two different kickers, two different uh, duck hooks. Yeah, we might mention that Robert McGinty, number six, is now in kicking for Florida. He is the youngster from here in Jacksonville. He went to Fletcher High School in Neptune Beach. Six plays, 41 yards, possession time, 159. James Masty's three-yard run did the job and Jeff Dawson's kick was good. Why six plays? Why 41 yards? Because Arthur White made the great hit on Lars Tate. Coughed up the football. The Gators take advantage of the turnover. Put six. What a great college football game. You and I have the pleasure of watching this afternoon. Now we get ready to uh, kick off again, and here is McGindy. He is a junior who's a transfer from Auburn who kicked a 51-yarder against Auburn last week. Boots it off, and it's going to go deep. It'll be taken by Keith Henderson. Henderson at the 20, the 25, and taken out of bounds in front of the Georgia bench at about the 32-yard line. You Gator fans who are planning to travel to Tallahassee for the FSU game in three weeks plan to be there a night early to see the Gator basketball team open its season against Florida State Seminoles. That game is Friday evening at 7.30 in the Leon County Civic Center. And on November 17th, the Gators play their annual exhibition game against Athletes in Action at 7.30 in the O'Connell Center. You can call the Gator ticket office toll-free at 1-800-342-7851 for more information. I'll be uh, looking forward to that game in uh, Tallahassee, watching the Seminoles and Gators play round ball. First and 10 at the 32-yard line. And Jackson throws out in the flat. It's going to be complete to Henderson. Henderson taken down at the 35-yard line after a short gain as Rondy Weston and Scott Armstrong do the job for the Gators. A little quick screen out in the flat, trying to get the receiver in the open spaces to Rodney Weston on the short side of the field. The lineman was out to get uh, and make the tackle right there. Excellent hustle by Rondy Weston. There you see Bob Sims. What a terrific job the young guard's been doing for the Gators this afternoon. Sims and Zimmerman, that offensive line for the Mid-State Federal player of the game under consideration. Second and seven at the 35-yard line as the hit is made by Arthur White on Lars Tate right at the line of scrimmage. Well, here's Lars Tate, the outstanding tailback Getting hit by Arthur White, the guy that caused the fumble on the previous drive. He's fired up. 40,000 Gators are on their feet, given the jaws, the Gator jaws signal to their defense, hoping to spur them on to uh, greater heights. Third down and seven. Jackson at the controls at the quarterback spot, and he hangs on to the football, turns up field. He's scrambling, and he is brought down as he crosses the 40 at the 41. He's going to be close to the first down, but I don't think he got it. Good scramble, though. Lewis Oliver made the tackle. Well, Steve Stipe was coming in a blitz and had the containment, but he didn't realize Jackson had the football. Jackson is so small and quick. He was buying before Stipe could pick him up. The Gators were putting a lot of pressure on the Georgia quarterback right there. And, in fact, they did come up short, and there's Ugga. What are they going to do? My goodness, are they going for it right here? What a... What a risk. No, they're going to call timeout. Think about this. We'll be right back with more, but first let's take timeout for these messages.
On fourth down, Carpenter kicks for Georgia, and it's not a good one. Comes out of bounds here on the near side. Shank, he shanked, he shanked that one, and it comes out at the 40-yard line in front of the Florida bench, thereby giving the Gators great field position. Earlier today, he had some boomers, but he shanked that one after Georgia thought for a minute that they might go for it. Gators coming up on the 40-yard line. Look at this statistic as compared to the first what a, quarter. What a surprise. A total offense turned around now in the Gators' favor. Here we see Carpenter. He just misses the ball off to the side. The yep. ball gets out of bounds quickly, and the Gators have it on the 40. Their own 40. He knew he hit it wrong, too. First and 10 at the 40-yard line, and it is James Massey still on his feet and going to the 48-yard line. The young back showing poise right now. He's just not closing his eyes. Of course, he never closed his eyes, but theoretically speaking, they just approach that line of scrimmage very rapidly sometimes and don't look for the holes. Massey's playing with some maturity right now, looking for those holes, taking advantage. What did he do? He picked up eight yards. The tackle made by Whitecliff Lovelace for Georgia, number 94. It's second and two for the Gators. And again, Massey, and he gets the first down in the Georgia territory to the 47-yard line of the Bulldogs. And Richard Tarditz, the right end, makes the tackle. Now, there should be a lot of confidence in that offensive huddle right now. Kerwin Bell's back there with his fist in the air. He's saying, let's keep it up, let's keep it up. Keep the football, you keep the football, you eat the clock up, you might put points on the board, and Georgia doesn't have it. Therefore, they can't score and get back in the lead right here. 24 to 19, Florida over Georgia with 11.51 to go in this ballgame. First and 10 at the 47-yard line as we look at Galen Hall. He's sitting on a 24-19 lead in the fourth quarter. It is Anthony Williams with a call to the 45-yard line, so he picks up just two, and here's Steve Boswell makes the tackle, number 44. The senior linebacker, inside linebacker, 222 pounds, 6'1". Boswell makes a nice hit on the big, strong fullback, Anthony Williams from Tampa Plant, who has, that's a five-yard average. That's a pretty decent outing, isn't it? It certainly is. I bet he'd take that every week. The second and eight at the 45-yard line for the Gators. Eye formation with a slot to the left side. Blitz. And the give-off is to Massey, and Massey is taken down. Might have lost a yard or so on the play. That Georgia defense knew that was coming, and they were right there. Well, as we mentioned all afternoon, Georgia will line at a minimum of eight guys up close to that line of scrimmage, and they're going to send most of them right now. Massey's trying to hit the quick trap, but there's just nothing right there. Uh, Boswell, 44, doing a nice job. Georgia just shutting that play down. Third and nine. Kerwin may be forced to put the ball in the air. At the 46-yard line. Again, Florida going with a slot offense to the left side. And Kerwin is going to throw as he drops and looks and goes long. And it is intercepted by Georgia at the 18-yard line by John Little, number 19. But there was a flag on the play at the 46-yard line. Irwin trying to hit the other freshman wide receiver, former tailback Tony Lomack. It's a hold against Florida, and it was declined, and so Georgia gets the football back. But this is really no big deal. This is very similar to a punt. If, if he'd been sacked right here, they'd have been forced to punt, so it is an excellent play by John Little, but in terms of field position, no big deal. Uh, Georgia has the ball inside their 20-yard line. Uh, Lomack not able to come up with the, re the reception right there. So it's first down for the Bulldogs at the 19-yard line. 10 minutes and 21 seconds to play. It was a turnover, but still, no big deal. James Jackson, junior from Camilla, Georgia. A motion man to the top of the screen. And the pitch is going to go to Tate, and Tate turns upfield to the 22-yard line for a gain of three before he's tackled by Keith Williams. I just had a deja vu right there. They ran that play last year, pitched it to Keith Henderson or Tim Worley, uh, both of them at different times, and what they do, no one caught them until they were in the end zone, about 60 or 70 yards, each one of them. That very same play, that time, the Gators shut it down for a two-yard gain. Tate has had 23 carries for 75 yards this afternoon. Second down and eight at the 21-yard line. New situation for Georgia as the give-off goes to Tate. 
and he gets the first down as he fights across the 30 to the 33-yard line. It is Lewis Oliver and Curry Watkins combining on the tackle for the orange and blue. 9.39 here in the fourth quarter. Watch him load up. Look at the fullback, McCluskey making the big block up front. Lars Tate finds a gaping hole. He's into the secondary before Kerry Watkins, Adrian White, and Lewis Oliver can bring him down. First and 10 at the 33-yard line now for the Georgia Bulldogs. With the eye, receivers left and right. Jackson to throw, and it is incomplete. It was intended for John Thomas, number nine. Good coverage by Lewis Oliver, a sophomore from Belle Glade, Florida. And the Mid-State Federal Savings and Loan is performance-minded. They're proud to recognize outstanding individual performance with Mid-State's first valuable player of the game award. Physical fitness, keen mental concentration, and a true spirit is what Gator football is all about today and in the future. And a lot of guys are in contention for that award. Lewis Oliver just took himself out of the game. Dwayne Glover, number 33, is in at safety. On second and 10 from the 33-yard line, they give off to Henderson, and he's brought down. Jason Lambert from right here in Jacksonville, Florida, doing an excellent job right here. Making watch the top of your screen. Watch six foot four outside linebacker Jason Lambert fight off the block of Sadowski, the tight end. There's Armstrong and Charlton in pursuit. Big third and nine and a half right here. He made a great tackle in the first half too. Third down and ten. Ball on the 33. 8:48 to play in the ball game. Florida up 24-19. The motion man would be Cassius Osborne, comes to the bottom of the screen as Jackson tries to turn outside. He's scrambled and chased by the Gators. They take him down at the 34. So a one-yard gain, and Jarvis Williams ran him down, the junior from Palatka. You know, they used to give the stars on the helmet we were talking about for big plays in critical situations. Right there, Jarvis Williams would not look. Let Jackson, with all his talent and running ability, get outside. He shut him down. They were in the sprint out action. Jackson had the chance to run or throw. Jarvis Williams came up out of coverage to catch the quarterback, forcing Georgia to punt the football away with 8.02 left on the clock. This is the fourth kick this afternoon for Carpenter, which is, might be a high for him for the season in one game. He gets off of beauty, too. Really booming it and sailing it. And it'll be taken down by Kerry Watkins at the 20. He's across the 30 to the 32-yard line. Oh, my goodness. I thought there might be some confusion right there, Jim Gallagher. The short safety, I think it was Loden, signaled for a fair catch. But then he took his hand down, and Kerry Watkins takes the football away from him. Some confusion back there. And, boy, you don't want confusion when you're receiving a punt, a high, booming punt deep in your own territory. You do not want any mental miscommunication. Kirk Warner, number 83, making tackle. Seven minutes, 46 seconds to play. First and 10 on the 33 for the Gators. Slot I, Ed Frazier's in the slot. The slot would be to the left side, and the give off is gonna go to James Massey, and Massey takes it to the, call it the 37 yard line. He, he, well, he get, might have picked up a couple of yards. We'll wait and see. Well, the Gators are thinking control the football. Control the football. Give our defense a rest. Move the chains and get points if we can. Do not go in a closet on offense. 7.20 left in the football game. Move the chains. Eat the clock up. That's what they're thinking in that huddle, as you see. Sims and Wright and McCarthy line up in the core of that Gator offensive line. Second and six ball at the 37-yard line as Kerwin Bell throws, and it is complete to Darrell. And Willard across the midfield stripe, taken out of bounds in front of the Florida bench at the Georgia 49. Gary Moss, the red corner man, takes him out. Darrell Willard from Eastside High School in Gainesville. Look at the protection. Look at Jeff Zimmerman right there. He's like the Great Wall of Florida all by himself. Willard's out here. No one is even on the screen in coverage. That's what I'm talking about. Not going in a closet with your offense. Keep that playbook open. Throw everything at him. First That's what the Gators did right there. Willard wide open makes the reception. First down inside Bulldog territory. He's had four catches for 53 yards this afternoon. James Massey and Massey fights to the 42-yard line. 
Good carry by Massey. Watch the offensive guards, Jim Gallagher. Bob Sims and Charlie Wright. Charlie Wright from San Juan Capistrano, California. Look at big Bob Sims. Look at Anthony Williams and big Jeff Zimmerman. Look at that. That's what you call a pancake or a KO. He just had the guy going backwards on skates. <laughs> Second and three at the 43-yard line. James Massey, 12 carries for 49 yards. Tough yards, tough yards for James Massey. All of them. And they came at the right time. Again, he gets the call and is stacked up as he hits the line. Well, that time, again, uh, maybe some uh, uh, immaturity right there. There was an opening inside, but he was hustling so much, trying so hard, he hit rather quickly, and Georgia was all over him. But there was an opportunity right there for him. John Brantley makes the tackle. Third and two. They need to pick up that first down. Why? To continue to move the football, continue to kill that clock. Brooksville, Florida loves the Gators, that sign. Fernando County, they've sent, certainly sent a lot of great athletes to Florida. Kevin Sutton, a tremendous ball player right now at Brooksville High School. And there is Kerwin Bell dialing on oh! the touchdown Florida. Ricky the Rocket Mateo over 89. Hallelujah, baby. I think that's what they're saying to each other right now. Or something like that. Let's look at it. All right, Kerwin Bell, a little bit of a play action right there. Mateo's got... The cornerback, Greg Williams, on the bite. Now he's going to run right by him into the sun, looking back into the sunshine. Very difficult catch for the wide receiver. He does the dance in the end zone. What a brilliant effort. 5.34 to play. The teal with the separated shoulder. He's not healthy. He's wounded. 30 to 19 is the score. Dawson will attempt the extra point. Bird is the snapper. And Ewing will hold. And there it is. And it is good. And Florida leads 31 to 19. Earning a perfect 10 in anything is tough. But there is one carpet that earns a perfect 10. One carpet combines luxury and beauty with durability. One carpet is guaranteed against matting and crushing for 10 full years. One carpet is a perfect 10. Anything Goes Carpet by Armstrong. A good leader has to have two essential qualities. One, you've got to be persistent. Always keep trying no matter what. And two, you've got to be able to instill that winning attitude in others. That's how the Ford dealers have stayed number one in truck sales here for 18 years. They keep working to give you the best deals on tough Ford trucks. And they pass on that positive attitude to everyone in their dealerships. I tell you, it's great working with the leaders at your Florida and South Georgia Ford dealers. Well, you don't find a better leader than Galen Hall talking about never quitting, never giving up. That's his attitude, and he's made his players believe in it. And let's give Galen Hall and Mike Heimerdinger, the offensive coordinator, uh, they share those duties together. What an excellent play call. Henderson comes out of the end zone, and he's across the 10 and brought down at the 14-yard line. Now let's look at the touchdown again. And again, we're talking about from the press box, Mike Heimerdinger seeing the ability right here of breaking a deal to get the cornerback to bite on the inside move. And then he sprints right by him. He's wide open, looking back into the sunshine with the separated shoulder, lifting the hands up to make the reception. You know, he hurts, but I think he feels a little bit better right now. John Spirito with the tackle for Florida. First and 10 at the 14-yard line. Henderson hesitated for a minute, minute like he was going to drop down to one knee, then just got out, and there he decided he was out. And here is Jackson under a lot of pressure, throws the football away. Getting a lot of booze from the crowd here. He was from the Florida uh, partisans, and they are going to call him for throwing it away. There's the flag on the play. I'm sure that's what the call is going to be for. Now, I think it's rather a technical call. He just threw it as hard as he could over the head of his wide receivers and his offensive linemen. The Gators sniffed out that screen right from the beginning snap of the ball. Jackson had no chance to deliver the screen into the flat. He was just trying to throw it away. Well, let's take a look at it and make a determination. All right, he's going to drop back right here. He's in split backs, the backs fan out. He's going to try and dump over in the screen. Clifford Charlton in hot pursuit. 
I believe that's going to be the penalty plus the loss of the down. Well, no matter what, he it's something he had to do. He had no choice because otherwise he might have gotten tagged for safety. But he did lose the down also. Right. Backed up and lost the down. Second in, uh, as you say, a cab ride. That's <laughs> Call it 19 to go on the Gator 5. 5.22 to play in the game. Florida up big, 31 to 19. High formation for the Bulldogs. Jackson throws, and it is incomplete. It was intended very deep for Cassius Osborne, a junior from Statesboro, Georgia, the flanker, who was really flying. He's running a straight fly pattern. Ricky Mulberry, the coverage man. Good pressure by Jeff Roth, the nose guard. He was getting some pressure on Jackson right there. Rondy Weston, number 68. Keith Williams, number 66, playing their hearts out on that defensive line for the Florida Gators right now. Pressure, pressure. They need to put pressure on the quarterback, third and long. At the five-yard line, third and 19. Ames Jackson, the junior quarterback, has gone all the way for Georgia, taking him to a 6-2 record prior to today, and goes long overhead, and it is incomplete. The intended receiver was John Thomas, the split end, running a fly pattern off the left side. He was very well covered by Jarvis Williams. Adrian White, Ricky Mulberry, Lewis Oliver. Lewis Oliver coming back after being injured. Jarvis Williams in the secondary had their men covered. Jackson had no chance. Five minutes and nine seconds to play, and Florida with a 12-point lead. Fourth down, 19 on the five, and Carpenter will kick again. And the clock becomes a big element right now, Jim Gallagher. 5.09, and the Gators will have possession of the football. This is his fifth punt this afternoon. And he really sails it. Does he always do a nice job except for that one shank? Kerry Watkins. Kerry Watkins still on his feet and fighting and taken down at the 45-yard line. Other than the shank, though, you know, Carpenter really gets a lot of foot into the ball. You don't find a, a more beautiful punt than we uh, just saw right there. Right. That was 60-some yards in the air, and his heels were on his own back line of his own That's goal line. Just a brilliant punt right there, but maybe it's... Not going to be able to help the Bulldog cause here as we're... That's what it was, a 60-yard boot. 4.56 left in the ball game, and the Gator faithful are got their fingers crossed, their toes crossed, their eyes crossed. As, <laughs> as we look at the end zone shot a moment ago, Octavius Gould in a tailback, first and 10 at the 45-yard line for the Gators. And Kerwin Bell... Gives off to the fullback straight up the middle, and he's really swarmed under by George's defense as he hits the line. Steve Boswell, the first guy there to make the tackle as we look at the magnificent defenders. Steve Stipe, Clifford Charlton. Steve Stipe and Clifford Charlton, the linebackers. Way to go, guys. They've only given up three points here in this second half. Ferguson in at fullback right now, Jim, and Octavius Gould seeing action at tailback with a sore ankle. Rather surprised to see him in there right now. Second and 10 at the 45-yard line. Probably going to spot their spot playing some of the uh, injured players. Gould gets the carry, gets across the 45 to the 46. So that was pretty tough. Here. There you see the clock, a little over four minutes to play, 31 to 19, Florida leading Georgia. Darrell Willard, 21, checks in, and Mark McGriff comes out. Georgia needing two touchdowns, obviously, to win this game. A touchdown and a field goal will do them no good. Uh, three minutes and 50 seconds left in the ballgame. Looks, looks rather bleak for the Bulldogs right now, and the Gators are celebrating. Here comes Florida now as Kerwin Bell comes to the line. They're down nine on the 46-yard line, and Kerwin Bell is calling a timeout, and we'll be right back with more. But first, let's take time out for these messages. The laughter of children, the warmth of holidays, the serenity of still autumn mornings, a place to rest and dream and grow, to be secure. The people of Ryland understand what makes a house a home. That understanding strengthens our commitment to build homes of quality, value, and integrity. Saturday, Sentinel will direct you to our model homes. You'll find quality homes that are beautiful, spacious, and affordable. Ryland homes are built for life. We've received all your letters, and now the judges are determining... The most out, 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 outrageous stunt... ...that you'll ever see in Central Florida's wackiest contest. And that is Pia Magazine's preposterous performances. 
Join us Friday night here at JJ Whispers when our semi-finalists actually perform their preposterous performances. Then we'll take off from here on Transport Airlines to Hollywood. And stay here at the beautiful Western Bond Adventure. So watch this week for more on Pia Magazine's preposterous performances contest Friday night at JJ Whispers. Third down, nine, ball on the 46-yard line. Three minutes, 37 seconds to play. Florida leads Georgia 31 to 19. Took a timeout right there to get the right play in the game that they wanted to run. Didn't want to take any chances in having the wrong play called. Bell, all the time in the world, scrambles out of the pocket, looks, throws a short one, and it is incomplete. It was intended for his fullback coming out of the backfield, Dwayne Ferguson, but it falls as incomplete. And uh, so that means fourth down, and we're going to see McAndrew. Well, I, uh, I either slipped or I just fell on the floor right there. <laughs> that ball <laughs> scared me to death when Ferguson deflected it into the air. But George, as we mentioned, is a two touchdowns behind right now. Gators in punt formation. Well, that's Jerry Anderson on the sideline, and he wasn't. He's not sleeping. He's watching his special teams as McAndrew really sails it into the end zone. No return on the play. It'll come out to the 20. What a beauty of a punt under pressure. Georgia coming for the block, trying to knock that football loose. There are two touchdowns back. McAndrew answers with a booming punt. Albert the Alligator. And the policeman to control the crowds, and we hope they certainly do. That's uh, not a sight we want to see again. That was a 54-yard boot by McAndrew. The son of former New York Met pitcher, Jim McCandler. On the 20, the dogs start their offensive series. First and 10, and Jackson drops, looks, and throws, and it is incomplete. It was intended for the tight end, Troy Sadowski, but it falls as incomplete. Good coverage by Scott Armstrong for Florida. Remember, early in the ball game, the first series or two, how valuable Sadowski was receiving the football. Right there, he just couldn't find the handle. George is facing a second and 10. Thank you all for coming. Philly and Kerwin Bell over there visiting, telling each other just exactly how they did it. Kerwin Bell has 272 yards passing this afternoon. Cool breeze. Cool breeze Bell. Second and 10 at the 20 as Jackson looks. He's under pressure, scrambles out, and is taken down at the 18, 19-yard line. Arthur White again on the hit from Crossproof. And Henry Brown. I mean, there was some combinations. Clifford Charlton, they were all in there. Third and 11, 251 in the game. The Gators with a commanding 31 to 19 lead. James Jackson with a split backfield behind him. Dropping the throw, looking a short oh! run. It is incomplete. Almost bounced up into that secondary. Adrian White was looking for it, Jim Gallagher. He was waiting for it back there, but it was not to be for the interception. And the Florida Gators getting a standing ovation from their fans here in Jacksonville. Fourth down and 11 at the 19-yard line. I'm going to put my headache powder in my shaving gear. I will not need it tonight. <laughs> Chris Carpenter, Bulldog, has had a good day. Five punts, averaging 44.8 per boot. What a ball game. The University of Florida Fighting Gators have played here in Jacksonville against a, an excellent football team, a team that had one loss in the Southeastern Conference, two losses overall. Carpenter sails it, and Kerry Watkins takes it down, and Fair catches it at the 33-yard line. So it'll be first and 10 for the Gators. Let's talk about uh, Phil Maggio, the offensive line coach for the Gators, and Red Anderson, who coaches the tight ends. What an excellent job they have done. And Larry Kirksey, who coaches the offensive backs, and Heimerdinger, who coaches the quarterbacks and, and uh, wide receivers. Of course, Keelan Hall, his own offensive coordinator, and, and uh, Dan Brooks, who coaches Jeff Roth and the nose guards, Danny Coughlin, who coaches the defensive tackles, Ty Smith, the outside linebackers, and uh, Jim Dickey, the inside linebackers. Saban Uralian, the defensive coordinator. What a fantastic job the Florida staff has done getting these Gators to come back after a one and three start. Excuse me, one and four start. Octavius Gould on the carry to the 40 yard line from the 34 on first down with a little over two minutes to play. Well, Jim, you're right about that because they have to come back to a four and four record going into today's game. And uh, now they're five and four. 
and a, a legitimate bold hope for this ball club. There's the Gator offensive and defensive line, our mid-state federal players of the game. Yeah, we're honoring all those guys. Cause we talked about how important that line of scrimmage was going to be, and my goodness, did they take care of action out there this afternoon. They took care of business. Second and four at the 40-yard line as Gould gets the first down to the 48. John Little, the safety, makes the tackle. Okay. Georgia last year winning the ball game because they controlled the line of scrimmage. In 84, the Gators controlled it. And this year, that University of Florida offensive line and defensive line, the inside linebackers, all playing a fantastic football game against the Georgia Bulldogs. Well, next week, we travel to Lexington, Kentucky, and the Florida Gators will be taking on the Wildcats of Kentucky. And then it is a week off, and a, on November 29th, it'll be at Tallahassee for Florida State. On first and 10 from the 48, straight up the middle to the 46-yard line is the carry with a little over a minute to play in the ball game. Carrying the ball for Florida, Cedric Smith, number 39, and Bill Goldberg and Steve Boswell combined to make the stop. Now, next week, the Georgia Bulldogs take on Auburn, and they have to go to Auburn. They were 3-1 well, in the SEC. Now they dropped to 3-2, and two, and Florida goes to 2-3 and three in the Southeastern Conference. Last year, Georgia beat Florida, then lost to Auburn the following week after Florida had beaten Auburn the week before. On second and four from the 46-yard line, stuffed at the line of scrimmage, but a little over 30 seconds to go in the yeah. game, and the clock just ticks away here in Jacksonville at the Gator Bowl. Steve Boswell made that last tackle. So Florida will go to five and four, and in the Southeastern Conference, they go to two and three, and as Jim points out, they become very definite bold contenders at this point in the season. For Galen Hall, well, his record goes to 22, 5, and 1. And what a great win for him, too. And as Jim points out, for the coaching staff, as they come back from that record where they were 1 and 4 with wins over Kent State, Rutgers, Auburn, and Georgia. So three wins in a row, rather four wins in a row. Kent State, Rutgers, Auburn, and Georgia. And the last two coming over traditional Southeastern Conference opponents. And for Florida, Auburn, and Georgia representing two of their fiercest rivals over the years. What a contribution the freshman made for Galen Hall this afternoon. Stacy Simmons coming up with a big catch. Darrell Woolard playing an excellent game at wide receiver. Mark McGriff doing a nice job at the tight end position. There you see big Jeff Zimmerman, the Hulk, number 74, 320 pounds of speed and agility. <laughs> Charlie Wright, number 60. Look who Kerwin's going over and patting on the back. Bob Sims, he knows where, it, where the protection came from today. Jason Lambert with his dad who lives right here in Jacksonville, Jesse Lambert. Boy, they're celebrating, and well, they should. Rondy Weston, number 68. We're going to have a good time at the Lambert house this evening, I'll tell you that. Final score, Florida 31 and Georgia 19. And what a different ball game this turned out to be from last year. And from the, the first quarter, my goodness, did Georgia ever take control of this ball game early in the first quarter? Most of the first quarter, the Gators came back very strong in the second quarter. Then the second half, it was pretty much all Florida Gators. We'll be back with more, but right now, let's take time out for these messages. 